We need it done this year. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm Tim. I'm Mike. I'm Andrew. Dan. And this is the Board Game Rundown. Today, we're going to kill a whole bunch of sacred cows. <laughs> uh, we, uh, the, the guys we're going to be on, we had uh, Andrew and Mike filling in today. They wanted to do a top 10. So we decided to uh, do a top 10 of what games we think are overrated and or overhyped, right? Yep. That's correct. Uh, so we've each picked 10 games. They are, there's probably going to be some crossover. There's probably going to be some hurt feelings. Um, mm. And I think Dan and I are both, we are going to not necessarily rate ours in the most hated. We are going to just go in BGG ranking yep. from lowest to highest. My number one okay. is just the highest rated game on my list. And then I'll talk about why I think it's overrated. Like I Wait, might even on your list or on BGG? On BGG. Sorry. Yeah, of course. Sure, sure. Um, and, you know, that doesn't even necessarily mean that I think my number one is more overrated than my number uh, 10. Right, yeah, yeah, It's okay. just easiest to rank it by BGG, I felt. Okay. Same. I, mine are different. Yeah, yeah, mine are, not, mine are 10 to 1 personal. Sure. based them on how disappointed I was. Right. Oh, yeah. uh, Kickstarter funding, a number of awards they won. So I got a lot of few, uh, factors sure. in there. I'll also point out, and you'll notice, most of mine are overrated games. We also included overhyped games, uh -huh. but that was much more difficult for me to yeah. choose. So most of mine are just personal overrated games, mm -hmm. um, which some I might even find okay games. I just think they're... A little too loved, mm -hmm. you know, the definition yeah. of overrated. Yeah. I yeah, love this, yeah. by the way, because yeah. so many of you are going to want to yell at us and say that we're wrong, which just, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, and I love it. The definition of overrated means if you tell me, no, that's a good game, you probably you like that my game. point. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, what it means. I love that. And for all these overhyped games, at least for me, I don't know if any of you uh, did this as well, um, I have just a quick little, what else... Would I suggest you play if you like these overhyped or I overrated have games? Some of them I might sure. look for help from you guys, um, even on games you like, as to what sure. might be a good lateral move. Okay. All right. Um, shout out to Potato Legion. We pulled the Discord, and he was the one that came up with this topic. Oh, was it him? It was him. All and right. we all agreed Potato. that this was a great topic. Pumpkin also, heads. Um, make sure whatever, you like, subscribe, <laughs> ring that bell. Ding. Also, um, Andrew was the only one that. Uh, knew that today was Hawaiian shirt day. So right. if yes. you want, you can wear a Hawaiian shirt. While H watching this video HD specifically. Small, we, HD small guns. Yeah. Good 4K Lord. small guns, so actually. So that right? being yeah. said, are we going to go right to left? Uh, or well, left to right. It'll be camera left Ooh. to right. So oh. it would start with okay. you. It makes it easier uh, for them. So number 10. Number 10. I'm so excited. Don't say it. Um, I own this game, and I still play this game. Yeah. It's ranked number 755 by one of my favorite designers, Wolfgang Warsh. Yeah, you said you had one. I was wondering what it was. The Mind. Oh. Oh. I should have known really? that. Overrated. Here's the reason The Mind is on this list. It's only ranked number 755. But when this game came out in 2018, I forgot to mention the other way I monitor hype is I'm in all of the big Facebook groups mm -hmm. on uh, uh, for board games. Yeah, yeah. Everybody was it. talking about this game in 2018. Everybody uh -huh. said this was like one of the greatest filler party games People you could ever play. Easily breakable. People though. were saying this game was going to change the industry. Like moving okay. forward. And let as a reminder, everybody gets one card. Right. Here's They're one card. to a hundred. Play them in ascending order without talking. Hey, you just That's the game. You changed the game industry. Now, that being <laughs> said, how shocked would you be if I told you that this game was the 2019 UK Games Expo People Choice winner? It was the UK Games Expo Judges winner, and it was the 2019 Best Card Game nominee. Right. On top of that, it was a 2018 Spiel de Jar nominee. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Really? Let's just say. What was it up against as far as card game? Was uh, it like Uno uh, Attack or something? Was it I like know, but the you mind gotta think in a whole Uno, year there like, had to have been a game better than sort the, these the from mind one to hundred and right. Uno Which and Monopoly been done the card game. Continuing, you're however, literally just playing the game but without talking. I know. Yeah, the game did this. Yeah. Anyway, it's terrible. a Meeple Choice nominee. It was a Golden Geek Innovative nominee. Innovative. <sighs> well, once you figure out that all you have to do is wait X number of seconds. Right. For it's a what year? Thing. Yeah, it was a uh, Golden Geek Board Game of the Year nominee. Game I, of the Year. I played it once. Forgot I played it until you started talking about. What it. did <laughs> it actually win? Golden Geek Party Game of the Year, Co-op Game of the Year, and Best Card Game of the Year. You wow. did so the much mind. writing on this pick. 
Yeah, you're, and you're mad too. I love too. it because you wrote I, it. It's I not just, like you're perspiring. I just perspiring. Want to know what it was you hate this now? Game. I, <laughs> I own the mind. I've played it more than fifty times. I have one friend that will always play it when he comes over, and I'm like, ah, fine. You've gotten your money's worth out of that ten dollars. Yes, game. I yeah, have. Yeah, I'm at, like probably they owe me money. The before. evidence, <laughs> the evidence <laughs> you've shown has proven. Yes, the mind Wolfgang is. Wolfgang I love your games. Oh, and I do too. I, Still play the mind, but wow, that game is overrated. Oh, that's brutal, man. That is brutal. Uh, my number ten made a bajillion dollars Ooh, on that's a lot. Kickstarter. That's a lot. It uh, it really for me put this game company on the map, hmm. right? I mean, they were around, but this is the one that really like skyrocketed them to where they are now. Restoration Games. With the gigantic Kickstarter of the reprint Fireball. of Fireball Island, mm -hmm. oh. uh, the so Bob, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, cool. I didn't have Fireball Island as a kid, but like you know, oh this seems like a lot of fun. And all the podcasts I listened to were like hyping it up, They're like oh this is so much fun, this is great, blah blah blah. And it's like yeah, this fun like goofy game. Let's play it. Bob's Kickstarter comes in, and the box is made of cardstock. Oh, no. Like, yeah. It's not even this good. <laughs> this, this... Yeah, like people I, were literally holding the boxes yeah. and... I picked oh, up, no. like, because oh, Bob brought it to, like, a game night, and I'm like, oh, sweet, Fireball Island. I scoop it up, and it's like, oh, God, <laughs> what have I done? Uh, I waited, you know, so unfortunately, Bob spent, like, $100 plus yeah. dollars, right, and get everything for it. Ouch. And I got mine for, like, 15 bucks at a Six big box... Six months later, yeah. At a big box store, like, last year... And the box is a nice quality, oh, no. and I don't have the expansions. This is it, is, is it worth fifteen dollars? Yes, okay. because I will play it with my kids. <laughs> right. yeah. But like, if Mike came over and was like, "Dude, let's play Fireball Island," I'd be like, "Why? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, man, not the dude will not abide." Uh, no, I mean it's fine, but like, not you know. There's way better. Right. So this is more of an overhyped one. Then, way overhyped. People, yeah. Made a so, ton of money. Yeah, it is exactly ranked this one 12 25 <laughs> so. on BGG. But when it came out, everybody was freaking out about mm -hmm. it, right? Oh, this sure. is so good. Wow. To me, this is like, no. No, this is not so good. It is, it, it is a fine game to play with kids and your family. With kids, not like sure. adult family because it is boring, you know, I, after I, a minute. I've admittedly never played it, but I felt like a gimmicky game from the start yeah, yeah, and yeah. like it's a nostalgia well, money grab. Sure. The only the, the main issue I had though is it was so expensive to get and now it's yeah, so cheap to yeah, get. Yeah, that's not and fair. And again, like that box quality, you there's right. no excuse for that. That is insulting on like wow. how bad that box was. And we've also seen from Restoration Games that they, you know, that's what they do is nostalgia grabbing stuff, but it's almost well, never they also a money do, grab. But they do unmatched, right? Sure. That's unique to them. Sure, that's but, true. And their Return to Dark Tower, like it's funny because Bob specifically didn't back Return to Dark Tower because, because Fireball uh, Island was so that, nasty and yeah. like just... Yeah, talk about... That must be like Bob's least liked gaming company because he's like, I bought the crap from him and then they call it something <laughs> great and I don't get it. Yeah. Now I can't get it. But yeah. I can see being jaded by sure. that purchase yeah. and not wanting to get Dark Tower. I don't yeah. blame him. Yeah. yeah. And it turns out Dark Tower is an amazing yeah. game. You know, wow. but anyways. So that that's my number 10. Wow. It is ranked 1225. Uh, so I'll, I'll start by saying I'm going to be kind of the weak one here out of all these guys because I just Usually. don't, you know, the whole overrated, overhyped thing. This is like I almost feel like I just wrote a game, like a list of games I like that other people don't, right? Because that's, Wait, that's that over. you don't like Sorry. that other people oh, do. Way to follow them. What he said. You're out of here. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like a child that wanders into the room uh, in the middle so, of the conversation. So like Tim, I'm going to start with something <laughs> that is overhyped, not overrated. Um, I had to include this on the list. You already know what this is. You've actually mentioned it in the last few days, so Mother. I think you thought about putting it on your list. I don't know if you did, <laughs> but I'm just going to read this sentence right here. I've played it a few times. It's a fine game. I don't own it. But 219,382 backers pledged $8,782,000 and, and $571,571 oh, $571 yeah. to help bring exploding kittens to life. Oh, yeah. Okay. And yeah. it's just the most overhyped thing. It blew. I mean, it's still one of the most funded things on Kickstarter. It's a good game. Every, I, it's fine. It's a good game. It's not worth $9 million. Sure. Right? Like, sure. that's my thing. It's yeah. totally Wait, you backed fine. it for $9 million? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, again. I want them all. There's a reason, he can't even afford <laughs> sleeves anymore. <laughs> there, there's a reason I made it my number you know, 10. I sleeve are my cards. <laughs> not, not only is it the lowest rated game. That was a good it's, one. it's at uh, 3,464 on Board Game Geek. So it's not like it's the, the you know, it, there's a reason it's 10 on my list. I just... I 
felt like mm. it needed to be mentioned, and yeah. I didn't think anyone else was going to. No, yeah. so I, mean, it's so I fine. was just like. I, the fact that this little card game, that there have been a million card games similar to it, made nine million on Kickstarter. And if you go to most fun of Kickstarter of all time, it's still in like the top ten. Sure. It's yeah, still it's up like, there with like yeah. Kingdom Death it's, and a bunch of yeah, others. Yeah, it's like yeah. Frosthaven, Exploding Kittens. <laughs> and it's just yeah. like, what? Uh, you know? Yeah. And so that's just crazy. I mean, I just, it needed like at least an honorable mention, and I threw it on it as my ten because. Uh, that's totally fair. Uh, you know, hey, good job, Michael, uh, Matthew Inman, uh, Elon Lee, Shane Small, and Ad Magic Games. They're the ones that did it. Good, good job. But you they do those types of games. They take all those games you played as a third grader. They throw unicorns and cats and funny right. crap into it, and they change up a little bit, like that burrito game. It's oh just yeah, spoon. Throw, 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 throw burrito. burrito. Yeah. So they just take something. They say, "Hey, you know, how could we expand on this very simple game from our childhood?" And hey, they mass succeed. Market, mass yeah. market appeal. Yeah, yeah. It's, sure. It's how you make money in the industry because yep. this is not an industry where you make right. money. Matt sure. Inman's cartoon, the Oatmeal, is hilarious, mm -hmm. and that is where he got a lot of these people okay. into the hobby. Yeah. Right. Um, and uh, that's that's why it funded so much mm. because right. he has a huge following. It's just the amount of money it made and the amount of people I know that own the game is just staggering to I me. I mean, I have and it. So I yeah. know. So you again, know. just over overhyped. It. It's, okay. it's fine. Not at my house. No. Yeah. So my number 10 like is we can't an play over Island. We have to overrated. Play <laughs> it is an overrated game. I thought a little bit outside of the box. I know so we are a, a we are a <laughs> yeah, we are a Midwestern uh, board game channel here. Mm -hmm. So I chose Euchre as oh. my number 10. Oh, sure. Um, wow. I, You're I have, have angry people. I have written here um, <laughs> once you overrated. Right once, this you, childhood. once you learn Euchre you can't get better at Euchre. You can't strategize in Euchre. The only thing you can do in Euchre once you get used to it is accidentally make a mistake. Oh, sure. Like, you're just dealt cards, and you're kind of dealt with what you're given, and that sucks because I mean, it is a staple for non-board game people people who only think cards are for Texas Hold'em, Stud, right, and, like, blackjack. Euchre and Blackjack, <laughs> right? Um, and there are so many good like 52 card games so my replacement uh just to keep my number 10 short because there's not much to say about euchre and i don't know who invented it or what it is on board game geek sure. right. um, is a game it. called wizard wizard is euchre 2.0 it uses a standard deck and um it's 12 rounds or however based on how many players you have you start with one card in round one round two you have two three four five so moving like on Skull up King. and you you guess how many tricks you're going to win. Mm -hmm. And if you get it right, you get 20 points. If you miss it, you lose 10 points based on how off you were. Like Skull King. Yep. But everything else is Euchre. It's mm -hmm. uh, way Follow more suit, fun, yeah. way more strategy. And like there are times where you could have an ace on suit, but you have reached your quota of your bid, so you're going to try to lose with your ace that's, that's mm -hmm. uh, Trump. Yeah. And it's way better. Way better. Uh, my whole family has replaced Euchre, thank goodness, with Wizard. Cool. So, And I would even take it a step further and say Skull replace King. Wizard with Skull King from Grandpa Peck's Gotcha. Grandpa. I have you a hard even, time pitching Skull King to my mother-in-law, though. <laughs> it's or really play the crew. Pirates. Chick. It's Pirates. Okay, okay. It's, okay. That's play, why. It's sure. Play the, the crew. I have the crew. It's excellent. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. My, my problem with Euchre, Mr. Jaw Dropped over here, my problem with Euchre <laughs> is I find the game so <laughs> uninteresting. I have probably been fully taught, and I learn a lot of games. Mm -hmm. I, I, can, I can spout out rules from Twilight Imperium right now and stuff, right? Like I, I tend to hold that knowledge. I have probably been fully taught Euchre seven times in my life, and I have fully forgotten how to play Euchre <laughs> seven times in my Damn. life. It is so <laughs> uninteresting. You are I one cannot, I know, right? I, prefer, <laughs> I cannot hold on to that game. <laughs> I grew up in rougher neighborhoods. I prefer spades to euchre. Mm, like okay. Got to <laughs> okay. Rougher yeah. neighborhoods. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah, very, right. very regional game, though. There's only uh, pockets in the world that play it. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we're one of them. So. Yep. All right. Number, number nine, nine okay. Mike. Let's, I, I hear, mean, let's hear the I've, list of grievances you I've have. i played <laughs> so much euchre. It's for just, the next game. My number nine, I just find extremely boring. Mm. It's number 201. Oh, it's by Lucky Duck Games. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> the original Kickstarter brought $800,000. And then they made expansions. And then those brought a million dollars. And this is Chronicles of Crime. Uh -huh, oh. I like this game. Um, Chronicles of Crime has a very neat app assistant where you're scanning cards and then you read what that person is saying to you and you're trying to solve a crime and figure out who killed a guy. And it's just 
not that interesting. It's a guessing game is mm. really what it comes down to. Because uh, you also never play it at four. No. Uh, do Agreed. Not. Agreed. It Agreed. says best with two on Board Game Geek, but I'm like, well, it goes up to four, so let me try that. And it's just two people watching the other exactly. two people uh-huh. suss everything out. Don't play this with unless more than you two. Can, gotcha. Unless you can stream it to a giant TV. That's the only way you can even try to play with yeah, it. I played it with okay. four once where it was streamed to a giant TV, and it was okay. Yes. So overhyped or overrated? Um, I'd I say overhyped too. because it got a lot of Golden Geek nominees, yeah. like mm-hmm. tons yeah. in well, 2018. It is, it is in Innovative. It is innovative. It was at the time. Yeah, I'll for give sure. it innovative. Sure. It's more um, innovative than the mind. But there's just <laughs> no interesting decisions to be made. I feel like I'm just okay. Um, what? Uh, let's let's quiz this guy. Okay, uh, that didn't help. Let's ask this guy. Nope, we already heard that. It becomes a guessing game. Yeah. It, 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 like literally, after you're like, well, we don't have the killer yet. We've only got so much time because there's a timer based on the number of people you talk gotcha. to and you're like i can talk to maybe like six more people uh let's try this guy again nope didn't get what i needed let's try this it just felt so not that interesting it didn't have very there was no decision arc here mm. it was who do, who did i miss something from i was just bored senseless by this game my copy's for sale Oh, so dang. you should never be a detective. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. This uh, crime scene, dead. This this crime scene blows. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it's really I mean, there's not enough blood on I this say, set. Uh, I say Dan did it. I yeah. mean, it's a guessing <laughs> game. Yeah, I mean, saying. look at him. Yeah, I do find it a bit overhyped and everything, but I think that it's way more than a guessing game. There is definite evidence you are following uh, sure. if you are paying attention. There is definite evidence there. Yeah, if you're just clicking on people and talking to them and being like, I don't know, I'll talk to Bob next. Like, you're not paying attention. It <laughs> leads you, you in know? a direction at first. But then, like, when you realize you should already have the clue and you don't, then it becomes a guessing game. You're like, yeah. what did I miss? I have no idea. Let's try this missing guy again. Missing something, uh, which obviously isn't your fault. Everyone will miss something, right? Yeah. But missing something and having to go back and find it, that definitely becomes a grinding guessing game. That's correct. That right? happened in every game I played. We missed mm-hmm. something and had to go back, and we were guessing on which person we, we, we missed. That's or too bad. What piece of evidence I find missed. it a pretty fun game that in its time I could see as, like, amazing, mm-hmm. you know? Um but yeah, I do tend to. It is a little overhyped, and it definitely has its flaws. Games have come out since then that have improved on the base idea, for sure. I still right. want to try some detective games, but oh, that sorry. one was <laughs> not for me. All right, All Tim, right. what do you got, man? Number, number nine. N- number nine is definitely overhyped, and this was overhyped by me. This was overhyped by a lot of people on Kickstarter. I have a feeling there will be some crossover overhyped on this. Overhyped by you, I love it. It is uh, rated eight seven four on Vikings Board Game Geek. It is uh, it is a Kickstarter that made one point five million dollars. It went a, up since I looked at it. I, by love, a, these, <laughs> I love these intros. I wish Euchre had a by Kickstarter. A company right. by a company that I that I really enjoyed. Uh, some of their other outings, uh, but Great Wall. Great oh. Wall is one of my biggest mm, disappointments. I didn't even think of it. You're right. Oh my gosh! That's I an mean, honorable mention for me. <laughs> on, on okay, so Nemesis f- like. Even with its flaws, is a really good game. Despite my problems with it, I will be the first one to say that it is a really good game, especially if you like X, Y, and Z, right? They right. nail it. Lords of Hellas was the first. Fantastic. Yeah, all in good on game. that Kickstarter. So good. Like, unfortunately for Dan, he and I are friends because of that game. Yeah, I know. You know? <laughs> Tainted Grail. <laughs> yeah, Tainted Grail is really good. And then, I, you know, so I'm like, yes, yes. And then I get Great Wall, and, like, the production value is off the charts. I get the game, and I'm like... What? Yeah. Uh, it takes way too long. It the way uh, too long. it does really interesting things, but I don't know how to fix this game. Yeah. And people, like I've complained on the forums, and the people that love this game are like devout and fanatical. Defending God love you. It. It's also by far the most hate we've got on our channel is we were berated mm-hmm. for not liking the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. That's your opinion. I gave you my opinion. Right. I really <laughs> have a lot of problems with this game. I really want to like it. I've played twice. I, I want to play it a third time uh, using only three players because I played it at four and five and wanted uh, to kill myself. Yeah. It was terrible. Dragged. You played on You played in the five player, I played one, on right? the five player. Oh. That took five hours. Yeah. I'm surprised we're still friends. Mostly That's just because I provided such a bad gaming experience say, those, those at my house. Those two things are completely unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, it was terrible. I wanted to call the game. It was so bad, but we were trying to play it so we could review it. On top of the fact that we used some of the leaders or variable player powers that were from the Kickstarter 
Twitter uh-huh. that were clearly overpowered. Way broken. And the designers even defending that these are broken, but yet they're but supposedly going to be or but something. But they right? supposedly are going to reprint it and they're mm. going to change some of those oh, leaders. I didn't know that. Oh, well, okay, yeah. Yeah, and there is a new uh, Kickstarter coming for this, but I don't even know that I'll go and look at it. I'm you know what I mean? I mean, I might look at it just to see what they change, but I'm I, not looking at it with any intention of any money coming out of my wallet. I agree with everything you've said. So, anyways, uh, uh, great wall, great disappointment. <laughs> uh, so, my number nine, I don't know if it was overhyped because I didn't know anything about it until this group of guys that I keep playing with just kept talking about Oof. how amazing the game is. Oh. It's so good. Yeah. Dan, it's so good. Yep. Who cares if you won't like it? Play it with us, oh, Dan. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, well, I disliked it. Oh, well, that's fine. Let's play it again, Dan. It's okay, so I'll good. Play it again. <laughs> it's going to be oh, one of two, and it's so oh, good. Oh, it's still bad. And both um, are on his list. Hey, let's play it again at Origins. Fine. You know oh. I don't like the game, but I'll sit down and play. Oh, it oh, was still absolutely it miserable. Um, it's so, so good. Designed... If you give one more example of how they convinced you to play, <laughs> yeah, no, I need to know it. what it's it is. Free. I'm about to look. So designed <laughs> by James Ernest and Mike Selinker and produced by Mayfair. These guys will not shut up about Lords of Hellas. Yeah. I mean, Lords of Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Lords of Vegas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> reprinted by Hellas. Lone Shark Games yeah, yeah, yeah. also. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, so I just don't I just don't get it. Love it's it. not good. Love I just it. don't so get good. it. Especially, I'm so happy now. What did we just um what did we just play? We need to review Bob's game. Found Foundations of Rome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I found mean, it's fine. Foundations of Rome. <laughs> play that instead. It, it's the same idea. It is better in every way. And yes, mm. I don't like the Vegas theme. That hurts me when I play things. I just don't like the gambling theme. It's a world I don't care about at all. Mm. So that hurts it. But it's just that I find the gameplay so boring. And then again, when we were playing Foundations of Rome, you know, different opinions, that's fine. Literally out loud twice, I said, "Why do people? Why would people play Vegas again? It it just is better." Mm-hmm. Like so, but anyway, they won't shut up about it, and I just don't get it. It is a it. never it is played a, it. It's yes. a Vegas themed uh, <laughs> dice placement area control game. Yep. Um, gotcha. and I just don't. I don't. I have now been talked into playing it three times. <clears throat> I will never play it again. I, <laughs> I will so, never ask you to play. I, it again. I, you know, three strikes, you're out. I had the same thing for another <laughs> game. Actually, I'll be mentioning it. I didn't even think about that. I had another three strikes, you're out thing. You know that that happens. Further on the list, but I'm I'm done, man. Since, Play a better game. Since Dan says we can't stop talking about it, I'm going to talk about it real right. quick. Um, it's one of my um, I played it for the first time this year, uh-huh. and it's one of my favorite games I've played of the year. Right? Uh-huh. So it's so overrated. It's so good. Oh, <laughs> it's, so good. it's a blast. That's fine. Uh, overrated. My number nine. Yes. A game that you cannot win. A game you cannot lose. Nice. You <gasps> don't even play it you just experience it my number nine is is dungeons and dragons okay you i need a game that ends i'm i'm totally down yeah (laughs) like what is the point of the journey if i'm always going to be playing and there's no points or there's no ending like okay you're leveling up your character um i've never played it but I don't. <laughs> Life's a journey. It's not a destination. Uh, here's the thing. Yeah, but the journey has to end in order for the journey to there, feel if, good. If you're playing a well-written story, there is an ending with a well-written conclusion. But Sure, but I've seen like YouTube videos of people playing for 40 years, and it's like, I, that does not sound attractive to me. The same campaign the, for 40 years? That would be crazy. Yeah, right? it's just like, I want something I to end. 100,000. <laughs> yeah, I want <laughs> something to end 20. in like two <laughs> to seven hours like at the max, like if we're playing a, a big game. But there has to be like a, I beat you. So we, so we really need to actually play this with you, only because, well, there, there, <laughs> I love it. I love no, what I'm saying is there's things called one shots, right? Okay. So we meet on a Friday night. Okay. <clears throat> we The person who's DMing has a four-hour written campaign. He okay. knows the beginning, the middle, and the end, and we go through his story, and at the end of the four hours, we're done. And that's I mean, the story just play a play. board game. I'm well. Here's so that. Goes Why don't you just so, play? That so, goes into the other argument. I am really into acting, theater, and stuff like that, and okay. becoming a character and sitting there. And I'm not myself when I'm playing. I'm this guy, and I talk like this the whole time. And uh, you get into ooh. character. And, yeah. No, I'm serious. Like getting into character like that is so fulfilling to I me. Didn't and so that. if you're not into acting and stuff, I could totally see that. Oh, I'm totally into you know acting and all of that and so, role playing. But just the fact that it doesn't end. But I guess since there's this variant where you can actually end the game and win or lose caveat this also with okay your experience your mileage may vary with a good dm DM 
or a DM that fits your style. Because right. some people want to go in, they just want to kill stuff and level up. Mm-hmm. Other people want to play a game and get through Intrigue this and, and through the story yeah. and the mystery, right? So it's mm-hmm. not all just dice chucking and combat, right? Which is why, like, fourth edition, I hate because it just becomes a tactical miniatures game mm-hmm. at that point. And mm-hmm. I love tactical miniatures games, but I want to play those, not D and D. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like I, I want to, my D and D over here, and I want you know my tactical your, minis yeah, over here, right? Sure. Uh, I had a friend and a roommate that, um, gosh, I think we ran this campaign for like three years. It is yeah. one of the most amazing stories that we've ever gone through. It, he moved out of town, and we're like, if you, if we could ever convince him to run a game virtually, I yeah. don't play D&D anymore because I don't have the time I'd rather play. But if he was like, hey, Tim, I'm starting up our old campaign. Sign me I'm up. I'm getting out Heinrich the Entertainer, my bard. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> who is just all charisma <laughs> and BS. I yeah. picked a bard because it's I've never seen anybody play a bard because it was this was like 15, 20 years ago before it's before bards were cool. Uh-huh. And, uh, and, you know, and Bob played this gnome wizard thing that just was always stealing crap from people and trying to make wands and all kind of, like everybody had this quirk. Yeah. And we're all playing through this story. But this story had like so much intrigue and it was like this very unique thing. Now, I've played with other people where it's almost, it feels like us versus the DM. Yeah, sure. Bummer. Not fun. Sure. Like, I want to roll through a story, right? I have a question gotcha. for you. Yeah. Do you but, read books? Do you no. like reading books? Okay. <laughs> that, that also would play into it, I would say, because a good, like, DM and a good uh, Dungeons & Dragons session it feels like is, is going to feel like you're reading a book that you love, except gotcha. that every, every character in the book is being com- played by a friend of yours. Okay. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, But so, again, though, right, that may, it just may not be your bag. Right. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Maybe. Over. Rated. Sure instead, I, instead, you do you want a world where you can live and get excited by things? Charterstone, one of the best go. legacy games I've played. Wow. Charterstone. That's a jump. <laughs> yeah, I like Charterstone. You know, it, well, it oh, has yeah. a it has a beginning no, and it. an end. Yeah. It has a story. It has a an evil uh, thing you're fighting, and it has interaction with other people and the different identities. And yeah, Charterstone. It does, it does stuff. Okay, never played D and D. I would. I really think we should do a one shot at some point because then you sure. can say, no, I hate this. And it's like, hey, that's fine. Sure, that's sure. something we should almost just live stream. Sure. Uh, right now. Uh, forget, uh, forget, right now. forget eight through one. Let's start <laughs> Mike. it. Uh, okay. Mike. <clears throat> Number Mike. eight. Uh, this is going to be an overrated game because it's number 78. Nice. Wow. This is designed by Luciani and Tassini, a very successful Euro strategy design team. These guys have made Zulkin, which I owned uh-huh. and played before I bought this game. These guys have since then designed Grand Austria Hotel, great dice worker placement game. Never played. Barrage, a great worker placement yep. game. Italian. Gollum and uh, Lorenzo Il Magnifico. These uh-huh. are all highly recommended games. But I can't get over how unbalanced Voyages of Marco Polo is. Oh, mm-hmm. never played. Never played. Oh, yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So this is a dice placement game. And you are essentially either fulfilling contracts or you're journeying down the spice road to get to different locations using camels and uh, getting points. Mm -hmm. Um, Everybody has a variable player power. The issue I have with this game is that the theme is the voyages of Marco Polo, but voyaging in this game is the hardest thing to do. They even give you variable player powers to make traveling down the spice road easier You ain't going to win with one of them, though. I can tell you that much, Mm -hmm, okay? mm -hmm. I want to enjoy this game so much because I like that team. I love dice placement. Um, But if you're fulfilling contracts and one other person goes all in on voyaging the road, they're going to lose every single time. Mm -hmm. Uh, You have to get perfect rolls and play absolutely perfectly to balance the contract strategy against the voyaging strategy. And it just... It hurts this game so Boy. much to me. There's a game on my list I'm going to kick in the teeth because you have to play it perfectly to be uh, able you, to win. So. I mean, I'll you disagree. can... It, Same. Yeah. One strategy is just way <laughs> easier than the other. I still own this game. I need to sell it. Like, I'll play it. Put it but in your pile. I hate the fact that it is just so imbalanced. Now... Will the designers admit that they uh, made a game that's slightly imbalanced? They made an expansion to make traveling easier. Mm -hmm. Then they came up with Voyages of Marco Polo 2, 
which is longer and not quite as um, uh, not as easy to play. It's a little bit longer. Yeah. It's harder to learn. Uh, once again, they made traveling easier. Some people have borrowed the traveling mechanic and put it in Voyages of Marco Polo. This game was in the 40s when it came out. Mm -hmm. Like it was really highly rated, and 78 is just still too high for a game that's not balanced. Yeah. yeah. Well, like you, I own a bunch of games on my list. Yeah, <laughs> that's three in a row. Uh, I, I've only played it once, and I enjoyed it, but I did feel the imbalance for yeah. sure. Yeah, this is uh, my number eight is going to hurt some feelings. Bring it on. is a very popular game. It is rated six hundred and sixty-three. I'm surprised it's not rated higher on BGG, but maybe that's because like the harder core gamers go to BGG and rate their games. Yeah, uh, this game I owned and then immediately got rid of. Uh, because I thought, like, oh, I'm going to get to play this with my wife and my in-laws will want this. Uh, my in-laws now have my copy because I just had to get it out of my house. Euchre. Uh, villainous. <laughs> oh, okay. Villainous oh. overstays its welcome. The artwork is beautiful. The production quality is like, yes, then no. Mm. Uh, with a really stupid power token system where the power tokens are just absolutely terrible looking. Um, <laughs> I played the, we played the Marvel version once. We're going to actually review it. Um, because a uh, friend of the show sent it to us, and uh, so we're going to review it for him. I enjoyed it much more. It did not overstay its welcome nearly as much, yeah. um, but I think that a lot of people love Villainous, kind of like Fireball Island. There's the nostalgia for the characters from the, car from the, uh, the movies and stuff that you love. I get it. I like Disney stuff. I like you know Sorcerer's Arena. You know, and I, and I go to Disney with my family. We enjoy, so it's not like I'm anti the IP or whatever, right? Mm. I don't, the mouse is fine with me. <laughs> but uh, Villainous, I wanted to love so much. I see all the love for it on Facebook all the time. And I'm just like, I'm really glad you like it. But <laughs> I really don't. Uh, this falls under kind of a category for me that we actually talked about last night. You weren't there to where I don't find, well, I just don't personally find this game overhyped or overrated. Um, but that's because the people who rate this game highly are people that are just, I don't know, the uh -oh. not, not rude way to say it, but they're like, they're not gamers. Sure. They're just people that buy games at Target. Sure, and but so if, you post, if you post like a picture of like your villainous and your expansion, let's just say one of the expansions, like, oh, I love Radigan, so I've got this one, yeah. right? And you post that in a Facebook group for board games. You're going to have a thousand likes within two hours. Yeah. Sure. I guess I'm just saying it that when I look gets at what, a lot of Facebook hype, well, that's I, true. Well, when when you breach into like Target or Meyer, like you do have that crossover of people who think, uh -huh. like, "Oh, I'm really into board games. I play. I don't play Clue. I play Villainous." You yeah, know, they right. don't know that there's those hobby yeah, shops. I, like I, again, I'm just saying that if I'm looking for like fun, <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't mind Villainous. It just overstays its welcome. I like the gameplay, um, but. If I if I'm looking for people's opinions on board games, I don't look at those people. Right? No, that's like, fine. They're not that's, they're not you educated on the topic. Right, but you like can it. still be sick of hearing about it. Sure. Yeah. Being sure. overhyped. I'm just yeah. Again, I just yeah. it wouldn't make my list because of that. The people Fair. that are rating it high are civilians. It well, sounds so rude. Yeah, well, I don't know how to but, word but it. But to your point, and this proves your point. Is it that's why it's six hundred and right, you know, exactly. sixty three yeah. and not that, that balance of two hundred because things, the right. people that play games a lot know that are it's why not Gloomhaven is up. number one. Yeah. Right. Even though Gloomhaven <laughs> probably should not be the number one game. It's yeah. not on my that's list. That's actually a perfect way to word what you're saying though. The people that rated Villainous High don't know what board game geek is. All right. That's <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Yeah. As they rate it on board game geek. <laughs> yeah. 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 So anyways, anyway. that's that is that is my number eight. First time logging in, I'm giving this a 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ooh, Exploding Kittens is on here, too. Yeah, shoot. So, <laughs> 10. So, <laughs> talk about a sacred cow. I love that you just hit, um, uh, what was your nine? Man, you said it, and I was like, Dungeons yes. Dungeons and I'm Dragons? So, so you hit Dungeons and Dragons. I love that something like that wow. is getting hit, because I'm hitting something equally as beloved, and again, the definition of overrated for me, because it has got to be the number one card game in the world. And I just don't Magic care. Again. Texas it is rated 157, designed by Wizard Richard of Garfield. Barge and Richard Garfield and published by Wizards of the Coast. It's Magic the Gathering. I just don't. It's fine. 
It it's is a fun, so well designed, well thought it out. is a well designed card game. My problem with the game, and this is an unfair judgment on the game, but it is part of it for me, isn't so much the game. It's that the players of the game are just so rude about it being the best game. Oh ever yeah. Made. yeah, yeah. I can't stand it. They won't play anything else. So again, cost. So Sunken I cost. They so, spent too much money on it. Sure, and that's terrible. <laughs> um, so I I grew up with Yu Gi Oh. I came from a Yu Gi Oh background. I've always preferred Yu Gi Oh. I do not think it is as well designed as Magic the Gathering, but I find it more fun. And that's what matters to me. But the the Play difference board games for fun. The difference sick, that I find in myself and in most people that I've talked to is I prefer Yu-Gi-Oh. I will gladly play Magic with you if you want to. If you ask a Magic player to play Yu-Gi-Oh with you, they scoff at you mm -hmm. and say you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. And I hate it. it mm -hmm. Your game is not that good. Yes. Like I'm I just surprised. want you to know that. No, now, it is absolutely. I will not. say I am surprised because of the way Magic the Gathering people are, and I agree with you. That they also go to Board Game Geek and rate it as highly as they do. Well, yeah. One, <laughs> because again, they don't want to play board games. Again, though, 157. That tells me that the Magic players don't all go there and rate it because this would be in the top 10, you know, sure. like as far as games go and everything. But, yeah, so 157, it, it, there's only 156 games better Magic the Gathering. I just don't agree. That's that's all I'm saying. Yeah. I, I, I just hate that it has this facade around it that it is the perfect game. And, oh, you want me to play a different game? No. Go away. I How hate dare that. I hate that so much. It's not and, that And good. again, though, that is a game where the community has... Yes, it has, it has colored yeah. it for me 100%. Yeah, yeah. Sure. 100%. I joke around with Bob and them all the time because I've, I've, played, I've played Magic with Bob once, I think, and if they ask me to, I have the Magic Gathering app on my phone. I don't play it a lot, but if Tim wanted to, he could invite me to a game right now and we could play. I play Guess Arena. what? If I brought my two Yu-Gi-Oh card decks and said, guys, I just want to teach you this really quick. Nah, no thanks. Well, I'd play yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! with you. Okay, you've said that, but I have brought up 20 times, usually as a joke. <laughs> I usually say, hey, I got my deck, but I actually just keep it in my bag so that I can say, hey, I got my deck <laughs> as a joke. <laughs> sure. um, but anyway, yes, that is my problem with it overall. I just, it, is, it doesn't deserve the crown that it has, I think. I, I think that's fair. And I, I disagree. Think, I think we all that's think... Number that's eight. the point of overrated. <laughs> yeah. 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 If no one disagreed with me, I'd sure, be wrong. Sure, sure. <laughs> so. Okay, this is one of my... When I first started collecting board games, I'd say this is one of my first five purchases. This game blows. This game Love it. sucks. Um, it tries to feel like a civilization take over the world game. It tries to feel like a territory control game. But it just, ugh, I just do not like Small World. It oh, does oh not. Spencer's crying somewhere. Yeah. yeah, well, good, because this game <laughs> blows. <laughs> well, I took his seat. <laughs> it is a chair. <laughs> like, okay, I like the idea you have, like, adjective noun right. like angry goblins that's cool like in all the options that is a sweet idea everything else just blows like i need <laughs> there's a lost tribe that doesn't exist anymore and i need more tokens to take over a tribe that doesn't live there anymore why don't i just send the same amount of dudes there and take it over um i'm not the, the the way you take the territories no, yeah really. Every everything that is extra on a tile, you have to have more people. Mm, yes. Okay. So like, why do I need more dudes to take over an uninhabited mountain? Mm. What? Um, another thing is. I guess it's the, the conquering die. of indigenous people. They die on the way up the mountain. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, I don't know why. Um, like, I don't feel attached to any of those tribes because you abandon them in two or three turns. Mm. I just uh, like. Okay, three, two, one, I'm done. I collect. And then I just do the same thing, except now I do it with another tribe that has a fortress that specializes in fortresses. And then I just, three, two, one. It's like, mm -hmm. this game blows and it blows hard. <laughs> Overrated. Oh, sorry, let wonder. me be the Magic Gathering guy. I disagree. Yeah, well, you can. <laughs> and and I'm ashamed that World of Warcraft Blizzard did a, uh, right. did a what do you call that, a, Small Re World, of yeah, yeah, Small yeah. World of this Warcraft. Game, like yeah, for a game idea. that I put so much of my teenage years into, I'm sad that they they did a spinoff with Small World. Shame on you. What I, I don't even know what uh, that is rated on Board Game Geek, but that's fascinating. I don't even want to hear anybody disagree with me. Uh, I find it fun. Nope, no, you don't. I, I <laughs> <laughs> number World seven. Of Warcraft. I <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I, I now I, hate <laughs> Small yeah. World. I played Small World. I actually owned it and then 
sold it. Oh, it has a seven point two. I did put my ratings on here. Seven point two. Um, I it's own fine. it, but because I got it for it was like a. Uh, it is rated two ninety seven on Board Game Geek. Okay, it was like yeah. one of the write off cheap games here, I it was and, I, and I picked it up. Yeah. But, um, I I never played it. I kind of skipped Good. over it. It's just a it's just a fun <laughs> you know? family weight area control game. It's that yeah. it's definitely family weight, which is why all the mechanics are so simple. I mean, yeah. it has the War of the Whispers kind of thing, where it's like, oh, there's three cubes there. I got to move in four because they one for one. Yeah. It has that kind of idea. Yeah. All right, so we are officially on to number seven. I'm, I'm not sure if you guys. I'm not sure seven. if you guys have played this one, so I'm not sure if I'm hurting any feelings over here at all. Uh, this is number 105 by Madigo. It was uh, published in 2016, and this is Inish. Oh, I, I like played Inish. it. Never Inish played it. is a territory control it game. Cool. It has a Celtic theme, which mm -hmm. I love. It has a gorgeous box. It has gorgeous art on the cards. Mm. It has gorgeous art on the tiles, which have these unique shapes that sort of fit together in a unique way I've never seen before. And <laughs> the card play is pretty unique. It even has miniatures for a Euro game, and they're not that big or that detailed, but in 2015, 16 getting a euro game with miniatures was a thing <laughs> that you were like wow that's cool and i wanted to love this game and everybody hyped it up and everybody still talks about how it's a great territory yep. control game yep, and I it like falls it. so incredibly flat for me because of one reason you're bad at, at the end of every round <laughs> you have to check to see if somebody has achieved the in-game conditions if so you'll play another round and then you'll have a round of beat on the leader Mm -hmm. And oh. then that victory <laughs> condition goes away. But then you'll keep playing until somebody achieves that victory oh, condition. They have to hold and the and then they twice. hold the victory condition. Uh, and then everybody plays beat on the leader cool. for a round. And that then that goes away. And then you play until somebody achieves that victory condition. And then you play beat on the leader for a round. I can totally understand this because what you're saying is our problem with Villainous. I don't like a game that it feels like it drags like this game should have already ended we're playing another round like i thought we were done four rounds ago nope we're still going that victory condition ruined the whole game for me mm. i wanted to like this so much i love that art i sold this game after like four plays i gave it a shot did not work for me and it's 105 and it's still some people's one of some people's favorite territory control game and i just think it's so flat and that end game just I get like I just want it to end. Like it doesn't work for me. Oh, sure. I get it. I get it. Uh, now this game is ranked. My number seven is ranked five fifty four. I am shocked that it's ranked so low because everybody seems to love this flipping game, but me. I kind of hate this game. I started. <laughs> I I was like, oh, I missed out on the Kickstarter. I didn't even look to see what it did on Kickstarter. I'm like, dang. So I went out and got a Kickstarter edition, you know, on the secondary market. Did not really overpay. Found a deal. Hung out for a while. Found a deal. Bought it. Played it like once, and I was like, ugh. Like that. Maybe it was because when I learned it, I played it with a stranger at a convention, and I was like, maybe it was the dude it was I was their playing fault. against. <laughs> well, then I played it again, like the next day, and I'm like, mm, I hope that dude like is this. watching right now. Yeah. <laughs> and I played it again. I remember playing that with and too. again and again. And again and I played it with all the different characters, and I never had a good time playing it, and I could not wait to sell it. Dice, Dice Throne. Throne. Uh, the second Dice you Throne. said all the different characters, I was like, wait, I know what it is now. <laughs> Dice Throne. I don't like the art style very much. I do not have fun playing it. I don't know why. It's got but very man, nice is dice. that name clever. Dice Throne. Dice oh, yeah. Throne. That is clever. It's also a really interesting mechanic. Yeah, I haven't played it yet, but yeah, I've played a I similar played game. It. Uh, I, I mean, played, um, what's that game Spencer has? It's called like Knock Knock Punch or something like oh, that. Oh, Knockdown? Knockdown. No no, 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 no. That's different. Anyway. Knock Knock Punch. I like yeah. that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, Throne. Dice Throne is sort of a Yahtzee style game and everybody's got asymmetrical. Well, you've got your own dice and they're going to trigger different things on your player mat as you Yahtzee style roll poker hands, really. You know, mm. two of a kind, yeah, three like, of a kind, oh, full house. Kind this okay. ability and stuff like that. You know, things like that. So if you understand poker hands, you're going to understand how your dice should line up. And it's all very well detailed on the player mat. You've also got cards which will give you abilities to mitigate, you know, your rolls and things like that. You're going to attack your opponents, so on and so forth. And I don't have fun playing it. There's a Marvel version out that is everybody is getting their Kickstarter versions of. I originally was like, oh, sweet, Marvel version. I'm going to look at it. The gameplay is the same. Now, the characters will do, hopefully, thematic things for the characters. Mm -hmm. But the artwork is still that same style. It's just uh, Marvel characters rendered. Yeah. Oh, so, so characters I like rendered in an artistic style, I don't turn off, right? Like, okay, I don't like the way they do any of their characters. 
I love comic books. I love weird art and stuff like that. It's just, to me, I find it aesthetically all very unpleasing to the eye. The colors are great. Colors are all pop. I just don't like the way they draw everything. Mm -hmm. I did not have fun playing this multiple times. I was really happy to sell this to somebody who had a very good time playing it. So it's like, good, great, enjoy. Thank you for, I recouped all my costs. So <laughs> it was good. So Dice Throne is, uh, I'm surprised it's only 554. Because I was like, man, I'm going to get killed for hating on this game. Because <laughs> everybody loves this game but me. I mean, seven, it looks great. Five rank 500, that's like seven plus, right, on right. Board Game yeah. Geek. So it's I, still. I think it looks great, like as in it looks really fun. Yeah. I haven't played it, though, so I might hate it, too. But it looks like I would enjoy the hell out of it. Yeah, and I, a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. I've. There's a lot of games on my list and, and coming up that I'm like, I'm good being in the minority. How yeah. about that yeah. freaking insert design, too? Dice Stone has an amazing, like, idea. Like, where each character just has their own thing you just pull out and set, and they, like, unfold it, and they have everything set up in front of them or whatever. Oh, uh, I thought it was, and I thought it had a Quarriers kind of problem, right? Like, Not from so, the versions I've seen. So the, it might the be a deluxe season edition one, the season one Kickstarter it was just like the rails. Oh, with your okay. Dude. Okay. You know that I mean? sucks. Like I've seen someone open up. They they were getting their Marvel dice thrown. So you pull recently, your and it's literally you open up the box and it's just each character has a tray yeah. in the box and you pull out They've your tray, that. open it up. Your character's They've ready. They've improved that yeah. for sure. Okay. For sure. Um, so my number, what is it? Seven. I didn't write it. Yeah, seven. My number seven is just another sacred cow. There's not much to say about it. We talk about it all the time. The interesting thing with this one is it's actually on Board Game Geek twice because the first, second edition aren't put together, and so the first oh. edition. Is yeah. the first edition is 110 and the second edition is oh. 188, but everyone says the second edition's better. <laughs> so it just the the people just haven't rated it like they haven't gone uh, back to yeah. re-rate the second mm -hmm. edition enough, I guess, right? But anyway, Rio Grand Games and designed by Donald X Vaccarino, and that's Dominion. We talk about it all the time. Yeah. It's just it it doesn't live up to this insane hype that it has to where people say it's the the best deck builder and it's all people talk about and everyone loves this game. Let's it's it, the granddaddy. It's not supposed to be the best, just like Majora's but Mask is better say than it's yeah. the best is the problem. Yeah, you know? so like, what we say is hold out for Dominion's hot cousin, Dice Rouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one that I have on here, this is where I actually started writing hot games. Hot cousin, to, baby. I actually started writing games to try here because this one was easy for me. I talk about it all well, the time. If you like Dominion but you want barely a change, right? Like you don't want to jump to something crazy like Dice Rouse, like you just said. Arctic Scavengers is so similar and yet better in every way. And way better. It's so yeah. much better. It is just, it is like a post apocalyptic world where you all control your own little community of Arctic Scavengers. It's set in a winter world, which makes it a great game for me anyway. Um, and it just has a fascinating upgraded version of Dominion. I really like it. Every, once you get to the third round, at the end of every round, there's a fighting phase now to where you have a population in your deck too that builds up and you're fighting each other. And there's like a, this like deck of awesome scavenged items that whoever wins the combat at the end of every round gets this awesome item they put in their deck as well and stuff and it just it's it's so similar and yet still feels like a lateral upgrade mm -hmm. you know what i mean and i just please if you love dominion look into arctic scavengers just mm -hmm. play something else yeah <laughs> you know it's Agreed. all you talk about i hate it yeah dominion yes there's just so many better games dominion was one of the first and now there's just right. so and many it's not better like games. Arctic is my favorite deck builder. No, right? but there's, there's so just, many others you can jump at. That's but just a nice most stepping people stone don't. Up. Yeah, most people yeah. don't want to take a leap. They want to take a step, and right. so that's the one that I sure. would. Recommend. And you see those people that have like a full calyx full of I expansions know. for it, and yeah. I'm like, you've put several hundred dollars into the most basic deck building system there is. Yeah. 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 But thank actually, you, when you add the if you add Seafall, the, yeah, <laughs> thank you for inventing the system. Go play literally any other deck builder. Sure, uh, sure. I mean, Shards of Infinity. There you yeah. go. Simple $16 deck builder. Incredible. You game. want you want to see what a deck builder can do? Just go play Clank and see yeah. what a deck builder can yes. do. Go play yes. Dune yes. Imperium. You know? Yes. I don't even get me started. Best deck builder know, ever. Yeah. <laughs> go play okay. well, any legendary but game. But again, boring yeah. choice, I know, but deck I board. had to mention it because I talk about it all the time. It is so overrated. Um, my number seven, I played with my daughter. And this game pissed me off. Well, your competition. We went to a well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> robot animal. It made me so mad because, like, I think kids' games should have some form of educational purpose, okay, or some sort of logic or basic math, some sort of strategy. And I, I know this feels like a troll pick, uh, but my number seven. Is Candyland? Oh. That game. Sucks. I was really hoping it was going to be Animal Fun Animal. <laughs> that game sucks. Oh God! You cover your oh, ears, Jeff. Jeff, Jeff cover no. your ears. No. <laughs> you move forward, and then if you draw 
a candy, you either jump so far forward or so far backwards, you are screwed no matter what. This is the worst game ever made. Um, and it shouldn't be in any stores. It should be, it should be like deleted from all, uh, you know, like in a thousand years when they look back on board games, this should be one that should be not even like seen. It should be erased from history. It is well, not fun. The good thing is most copies are produced so poorly that they will not survive. Right. <laughs> Similar to that, uh, uh, that game you talked yeah, about yeah, at yeah, number nine. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, you're, uh, you're kind of counter, you know, countering yourself though, because you said, the candy man's the candy land's terrible, but you but because it doesn't teach your kid anything, but it is teaching your kid if they want to be a game designer everything not to do. Yeah. <laughs> so that's actually a really good teaching yes. tool, you know, if you think about it. That's a that's a good point. I'm gonna now frame that game of Candyland. Um yeah, it is not like okay, and some my other games that can actually help teach kids something, connect four. Uh -huh. You're thinking for the future. You're you're right. logically connecting how you can like you know, uh, do something. Yeah, planning ahead, sure. Battleship or guess who? The logical games that a three, not a three, my daughter's three, but like a four or a five year old can learn something, learn, teach themselves logic. Um, and it's not just like, oh, draw a card. Oh, I'm going to play that. Like another color based game that has to do with <coughs> trains right. that I'll talk about later. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, snap. Um, so, I can't believe you hate Russian railroads. I was going to say that. <laughs> So yeah, number seven, it. Candyland. It's bl it blows. You should actually in the future when you Overhyped. when you pitch your game, you're working on to people. You should be like, yep. so the selling point is it has literally nothing in common. With yeah, Candyland. with Candyland. Yeah, <laughs> I have learned. <laughs> so yeah, Candyland. Overhyped. Number six. That moves us to number six. Um, this is going to be our first crossover. And speaking of games which teach you what not to do, sometimes. Throwing 25 mechanics in one game just doesn't work. And that's the Great Wall. Great uh, Wall. There's just too much going on. I wish, like, I, I, wish I thought of it. It's, it's at least an honorable mention. set collecting and resource management and worker placement. And it's semi-co-op. I was going to say, and it's co-op, but not. it's not. And you don't even have to worry <laughs> about the wall. Like, and it's the weakest attack on the wall I've ever seen. There might as well have been children on the other side chucking pebbles at playing it. Candy like, playing Candyland. Playing <laughs> Candyland. Like, wow. Sir, they're back. Get the Water hose. They drew a Suck green. <laughs> the Great Wall just wasn't that good. I can't believe it brought one point four million dollars. It and the well, thing that is, was just because of the company's name. It's Awaken Realms is one of those company that blindly builds hype because of how beautiful their games are mm -hmm. and how but good their backlog is usually. Yeah, yeah, now people are starting to question. And yeah, with this game, this is the first time I'd go. Yeah, not so much. And these Ether are not fields was hit and miss for people too. Yeah, these are not insta back. This, uh, yeah, I just, I don't get it. That game did not work. It was so flat. It was not the sum of its parts. Uh, yeah, everything Tim said uh, just yeah. wasn't that good. Mm -hmm. So my number six, I'm now creeping into, I'm going to creep into the hot lava. Because <laughs> uh, uh, this is rated 116. This is a game loved by a lot of my friends. <laughs> Uh, this game came out. I played it at a convention. I believe it is made by Gray Fox Games. Oh, really? Uh, when I oh. played when I played this at a convention, the we played a first edition. The rule book was so terrible, yeah. mm. it ruined my experience. He's just wrong on this one. I, that's fine. That's, <laughs> that's fine. the point of overrated. <laughs> I played it. I played it subsequent times. I f the, the without the expansion, it still was like this isn't very good. Like I would rather play Lords of Waterdeep a hundred times over. Played yeah. it with the expansion, got better, still don't love it. Like, it's fine, but, like, the expansion basically, in my opinion, just kind of allows you to ignore some things and focus it, on other things. It literally things. is mitigate the expansion. Y yeah, 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 yeah. What, and, what uh, could it be? Uh, it is Champions of Midgard. It came out <laughs> at a time when there were a million Viking games coming out. Sure. It's like, oh, I'm sick of Viking games mm -hmm. also. And, uh, yeah, I just do not have fun playing it. I should like it. it I mean, I love... I love Lords of Waterdeep still to this day. Champions of Midgard plays just like Lords of Waterdeep. But with dice. Right. Okay. I was just saying, that's like <laughs> the difference. And, okay. and Valhalla 
launched it up people's lists. Yes, it's that good. Tom Vassell being one of them. He sure. like catapulted this up Me his too. top 100 because of Valhalla, because it was supposed to help you mitigate bad rolls. Yes. And then I still lost because of bad rolls. Oh, sure. sure. Well, sure. any With die Valhalla. game, you could say I lost because of bad rolls. But I was told this expansion was going to help mitigate my bad rolls. It makes a difference. It, it and I still got crushed. Like rounds <sighs> where you're building up to something, and then because of your dice roll, you do nothing. Yeah. Like you're building up and then nothing happens. Yeah, I just, I just, I don't know why exactly, whether it's, because it, I think that's some of it. I think that there's just, I just don't have fun playing it. Sure. For uh, a long time, this was my number one worker placement mm. game. For a long time. It has been taken over just because that other great games. Build up to an ultimate disappointing where nothing Again, happens. Again, obviously I can't argue it. this because the whole Me. point is if I like it, it's overrated. So that's totally fine. I just I don't understand that sentence with the Valhalla thing you're saying because the whole point is if you build up a bunch of troops and then nothing happens, that means your guys died, which is what Valhalla does. You then turn their souls in for great stuff. So stuff still happened, but you didn't get the goal you wanted, and I understand that. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't as good of a consolation prize as I needed. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> To, Understandable. It, to it, get anywhere in the game. It did improve my experience. <clears throat> still didn't love the game. Sure. Like, but yes. But just going off of Champions of Midgard all by itself, <laughs> uh, would prefer not to play. Sure. Uh, that was my number six. Uh, my number six is the other three strikes you're out game. Levi got me to play this three times. He tricked me into playing this game. I played the first time. I was like, I did not like that. And then some, you know, months and months later, he was like, let's try again. I was like, yeah, sure. Of course. Try a second time. Really disliked it, probably more than the first time. Wow. And then at a Meeple meetup once, he was like, a group is playing this, please play it with us. And I was like, Leo, you know I don't like that game. And he was like, come on, come on, it'll be different. Hated it, and I literally told Levi, I will never play this again. <laughs> like, I told him that. Wow. Rated 82 on um, Board Game Geek, uh, designed by Chad Jensen. I believe he has passed away. Chad. You know, rest in peace. And uh, produced by GMT Games, and that is Dominant Species. Oh, Dominant uh, Species. Dominant Species is a uh, worker, uh, not worker placement, an area control, well, it is worker placement, an area control worker placement game um, that is just, the graphic design is not great. Mm -hmm. um, you know, ugly. subjective, but I think it's not great at all. I find it extremely mean, and, just, and extremely long. And those three things combined kill a game for me. I don't want to be treating my friend like garbage for three hours. <laughs> We're just, getting crapped on for three sure. hours. Yeah. Too, right? yeah. And so there's just there's a lot of problems that I have with Dominant Species. But again, I tried it three times, and I, I hated every time worse and worse. And eventually, I just gave up. But people like it. People talk about it a lot. It's rated 82. There's only 81 games in the world better than Dominant Species. That's crazy. And that is Euchre nonsense. isn't one of them? <laughs> <laughs> you fools. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, I've talked about it in the past. Mm -hmm. It had to make my list just because of how much I dislike this game that people tend to like. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Number six for me, I think maybe another, like one of these popular games where maybe I just am not playing with the right group of people. It was just a disingenuous, oh, I know what this is. <laughs> just a disingenuous experience. You uh, Sheriff of Nottingham. Oh, I love Sheriff. Just what is the Ooh. what is the point? Like, Fun. why not just <laughs> always inspect a bag? Like, it, you're not gonna get like if you want to sneak in a lot of points, then the sheriff should just open every bag, take the small penalty, and then reap the larger uh, amounts of contraband. Maybe I just played with the wrong people. A hundred percent, but you might not like the game anyway, but de it is people-dependent. Yeah. It is. For sure. It's it like, is. oh, I'll give you an apple. It's like, dude, just go play no, no. another Dan and social I are like, this is way game. over this the is, top. This we game is like... Dungeons and Dragons for me. Really? <laughs> because like when I play it, every time I have to hand my thing into the sheriff, I'm like, please, sir, I just, I went to the market, I picked up three apples for my family, oh. so I swear it's three apples, sir. And then, you know, Tim will be the chef. He's like, oh, I oh, oh, don't think that's oh, three what, apples. What, what's all this, man? <laughs> yeah, like, you guys sound like, like there's cheese in this bag. <laughs> <laughs> We're in oh, character like, the oh, whole time. Smell like, obnoxiously. Sound so. like fable I characters. I have also played this in character. It is group dependent. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. tried this, like, you'd think it would be a good gateway game, and you'd yeah. show it to non-gamers, and I've had dud games that because of it. Yeah. Sure. I get that. So I, get that. Oh, uh, I love I love Sheriff of Nottingham so much. It has gone fun. down for me lately because yeah. of other games sure. that give me the similar crazy yes. feel. Sure, um, yeah. but but I, I do like it still. No. Social it, deduction game. You want something good? What were you gonna say? Sorry. Oh, no, go keep going. I was just gonna say uh, Secret Hitler. You will. I have played that game probably more than I've played any game. I mean, party games are kind of you, you play oh, those sure. more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I probably played that game more than I played any other game, and it's still fun. Yeah. And you're still trying to figure people out, mm -hmm. and you can still. Give those little 
you can act and you can be in, oh, yeah, in character right. and all of that. What and do you always say? I'm liberal. Yeah. <laughs> liberal or fascist. <laughs> me. You can no, trust I'm me. You can trust me. <laughs> I'm always a liberal when you play Secret Hitler. Yeah. So, so uh, that's my suggestion. If yeah. you don't want to play this overrated, not necessarily overhyped, but I would say overrated game, uh-huh. Sheriff okay. of Nottingham. Secret Hitler is one of my favorite games, so good, I'm okay good. with that suggestion. Yes. Our top five. Top five. Most overrated, overhyped mm. games. Mm. Mine is a crossover. You already know I don't like Champions of Midgard. It's my number five. Yay! I'm not alone. I just I played <laughs> twice, both times with Valhalla, this expansion that's supposed to help you mitigate, and I got crushed because of crappy rolls. Mm-hmm. And the Valhalla didn't help me that much. It was like, hey, here's a little pittance of a reward that you didn't get because your rolls sucked. Madness. Oh, my gosh. I mean, yeah, Lords of Waterdeep was my gateway game. I still love that game. I'd still put it in my top ten worker placement <sighs> games. Well. And then, like, Champions of Midgard was supposed to be the Lords of Waterdeep killer. You were the chosen one. And it was a <laughs> terrible experience both times I played it. It was such a letdown for me. Yeah. Uh, Champions of Midgard yeah. is very, very <sighs> overhyped. so sad. Part of me is like, man, did they play the right rules? <laughs> I well, I played with it. you. The second On time, Phil. yeah, but but the second time you went into it begrudgingly. <laughs> so I mean, that doesn't listen. Doesn't that set game, you up for that success. That game was put Woo! on that list for spite. It kind of was. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it, but it kind of was. Oh, but you Not me, you had a, you were you were gleefully it was participating. Very fun. <laughs> didn't like it. Uh, okay, so my it, it's funny. My number uh, five game was almost. Well, I was waffling between two, and I just decided that I was Waffles. more disappointed uh, in between. Did you uh, use the word waffle? I did. I was waffling a, in between. Huh. What, you've never pancaked between two things before? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never. Flip-flop? Um, <laughs> you ever anyways, between two games before? So <laughs> I ahead. almost put Cascadia because it's ranked 69. Okay. Uh, I think Cascadia Nine is play. overhyped for what it is. It plays too quickly. The artwork is kind of... Uh, it's also still kind of overhyped because Cult of the New Crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's number one on Abstracts, mm-hmm. I believe, as well. Yeah, so. but I kind of went with the game that disappointed me more than Cascadia because I had no expectations, which ironically is ranked 68, so one no, better, yes. right? Uh, Aeon's End. Oh, okay. And okay. I love deck builders. Man. Uh, and now we start attacking Bob. Oh, well, <laughs> I mean, we're n- I, uh, the rest of my list is like might even be under in the top 50. Mm-hmm. And so people are going to start getting upset. I'm about to break Bob's heart. Uh, but <laughs> Aaron's end, I know the appeal for Bob is like you build your discard pile and yes. then you flip your deck over. Right, which is a fascinating idea. Super great idea. I don't like it. I do not have fun playing that way. I also fa- I don't like the artwork that much. Like the monsters all look cool, but I think all the people are weird looking and i don't know if it's an uncanny valley thing or Maybe. whatever yeah. but i'm just like i'm looking at it i don't like the art style i really don't love this i when i played it i was just like uh, i don't know like in theory a lot of these things are very interesting but i did not find the game experience very satisfying and now to make it even worse like i've really recently thought like man i need to go back and give that a shot there's so much crap for it there's a lot of mm. stuff for it there is no good like entry point because actually ironically i was talking to one of the designers of the new uh the newest kickstarter right Uh, the newest the second legacy version of aeon's end Mm. and uh i was like i said to her hey where's a good point to get in now and she goes well actually you should get in on the first uh legacy aeon's end legacy the problem is you can't get it anywhere right well bob has you can play with him (laughs) His is all done. <laughs> right. Oh, it doesn't ruin things, change yeah, things? Yeah, oh, you didn't sticker know everything okay. and mm-hmm. stuff. And so I was like, well, that's kind of a bummer. And she's like, yeah, I get it. You know, and it, but she's like, that is the best place to start. And it's wow. like, well, you could make it easier. To- yeah. oh, <laughs> she was super, no, she's super kind and, oh, you know, and everything. But it's a real <sighs> bummer. It's it, I, it's just very disappointing. Everybody loves Aeon's End, and I'm just kind of like, meh, yeah. yeah. So, I haven't played it, and I really want to. Like, yeah, uh, it's pretty I high wanna, up. My I want to try it again, list. but I just... Mm. Daniel, the number five. So my number five Make is Make it a ranked, good one. My number five is ranked 58. Bob is already going, 58. <laughs> I recognize that number. Uh-huh. Um, is it this? Hi, Mike. This oh is boy. my Wolfgang Warsh game. Oh, oh, I know which one it is. <laughs> oh, no. Reach into his bag. I, 
cannot oh. stand the love for the quacks. Oh, of I love quacks. I can't stand quacks. It. Lover. I love quacks. Pause the tapes. And, and this love is her. this <laughs> is why it's it amazing. is on my overrated it's amazing. game. I love quacks. all it's amazing. three of them. Freak out! It's amazing. Oh, it, I love quacks. Amazing. It's, it's amazing. amazing. It's amazing. It's uh, amazing. Yes. Oh. Wow, yeah. 10 out of 10 game. <laughs> That's amazing. <Yep. laughs> That's all yep. you're doing. You're right. You were drawing, you were drawing my, uh, my rankings out. Oh, there's a 10. Oh, there's oh, a 10. There's a 10. There's there's a ten. Three, tens. Um, three tens. So produced by Schmidt Spiel, and I already said designed by Wolfgang Warsh. Uh, but, um, so good. Again, I, I love uh, Taverns of Tiefenthal, another game he did. Uh, one of my favorite games. It's an amazing yep. game. I just don't understand. And again, I don't like hate mm. Quacks. I don't like it, but that's more of just because I have never... Like, every time I play it, I have the worst luck in the world. Like, push your luck games. That's going to happen, right? Yeah. But every time I play it, like, I've probably played it eight times or something, I, I explode every round. And I'm like, I didn't, it's not like I pushed my luck too the far. The first few rounds you're supposed to explode. Sure, sure. Sure. Um, I just, you know, it just feels like, you know, I'm, I'm at the, I'm on the last round of the game and my first seven tiles are white. Yeah. I'm just like, and it happens every time. I'm not playing a game. Yes. I am putting tiles on a board and going, Okay, I lost. Next game. <laughs> like, that's what happens. And again, I just tend not to lean towards push your luck. Everyone knows that about me. That leans into the gambling thing, right? Mm -hmm. I don't play gambling games very often. Um, but a game, so it's ranked 58. A game that's ranked at 191 that I would just much rather play anytime someone brings it up is Raw. If you oh, want me yeah, to play Ra a push your fantastic. luck, if you want me to play a push your luck game, let's play Raw. I have a great time with that game. Even when I get destroyed, I have a great time with it. Mm. And I just I don't understand why Quacks is so much more loved than Raw. That's, I think, that's all I'm I saying. Think, like, we'll Ra see now that it, it comes out with the new yeah. edition that's prettier now. We'll see what the ranking yeah. is for that one because it's gonna get a it's gonna get a bump. Um, it's yeah. gonna get a bump. But uh, a yeah, well yeah. deserved bump. Sure. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people haven't played Raw. I think I think it is a much better game. I love both. All right, number five, Andrew. My hurt. number five. I own this I don't game. Let him hurt me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine are going to be a little bit more serious now that I've got the 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 obvious truths out of the way. <laughs> um, I own this game. I respect the the publisher. I love his games, but I just do not like, and I think it's overrated. Uh, I even love the theme, but Viticulture. Ooh, everything, Viticulture. everything That's just painful. doesn't feel good. By the time I get to like aging the wines, then I feel like I need to get something that I can't have. And then like all of that hard work of building your little wine uh, baubles, mm -hmm. then they just mm -hmm. go away. And I feel like I spent an hour doing that and now they're all gone. And I've got like X number of time left. I'm not going to fulfill these orders. Um, I have it because it's beautiful, and, uh, and Stonemaier Games oh. makes great, uh, high-quality products. Mm -hmm. And um, I would I would buy every game that that company makes just to support them and keep the 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 mm -hmm. legacy going on, or uh, the just the yeah keep yeah keep I, his company going mm -hmm. right. But with Viticulture, uh, I just I do not think it's a top. <clears throat> I think Viticulture's in the top fifty. Yeah, um, probably. I probably. I just Viticulture with the Essential Edition is number thirty. Okay. Mm. Um, yeah. The base game itself is two thirty. Okay. Okay. So I've played the Essential Edition Sounds only. Sounds like it's on somebody's list. <laughs> and, uh, good. Well, I'm glad. Uh, so <laughs> I just, I just think there are better worker placement games that just feel better. I know he's got. <laughs> the, his philosophy down of how he wants board games to be made. Um, and there's a lot of cool things that Viticulture does, but uh, I think it's just spread too thin, feels a little overwhelming for me, so I would say overrated Viticulture. Okay. Yeah, I hey. think the wake-up mechanic was kind of cool, how you choose what order you go sure. in yes, and you yes. get more rewards. Yeah. That's kind of neat. But to segue into our number four. Oh, oh no. Is viticulture hey! because I scythe like is viticulture. scythe is yeah. one of my favorite games of all time, mm -hmm. and I wanted to like viticulture so much. Yep, yep. And I like you said, I feel like when you're building up your grape engine and you level them up, yeah. and then they just go away and you start all over. I'm like, yeah. ugh. But I got to do all that again. I got to do all that again. So Stay on your feet, big you guy. You got to have <laughs> certain level grapes to fulfill recipes. Recipes are 90% are of your points. 
you draw a random one from the top of the deck. I don't have any of these. Yeah. Uh-huh. So now I got to do four actions out of my way that yeah. I wasn't going to do to fulfill this recipe. Or just get a different Or, or I could try recipe. to grab another one recipe, action. but what if I don't have that one? Oh, I got some of those, not all of them. You got to keep drawing those okay. work order Tim's cards. Turn. Oh, yes, he's got three out of four. Mm-hmm. Tim didn't play the game any better than I did. Or he tried just to happen to this have chump. Grind out all the cards he I didn't need. Happened <laughs> to have all of the stuff already sure. that he needed for the random recipe mm-hmm. card that he drew, and that's ninety percent of your points. I don't understand this complaint because you just said you like quacks, and it's I didn't. He didn't play any better than me. He just didn't pull any white things out of the bag. It's the same thing. I have fun playing it. Sure, I guess, but the reasoning there is just crazy. The whole thing about quacks is I expect it to we, be luck driven. Sure, I enjoy the fact that I can I can bust and luck can hurt or help me. <laughs> But when I'm playing Viticulture and I have this game that's like 95% based on a strategy, but then 5% based on luck, but the luck determines 90% of your scoring, ah. I got issues. Yeah. I might as well when play. When you're drawing from a deck, I it's might not as the same well as, yeah. play Taki Noko, which is okay. a very kid based game where if you top deck the right thing and you already fulfill it, bam, insta points. Yeah. So, question. I feel like I might as well play Taki Noko. You, you love Dune Imperium. I do enjoy Dune Imperium. Those entry cards win you games, and you're just drawing them from a deck. I think they're the strongest thing in the game. If you just draw a bunch of endgame cards, you win. You know? Okay. And, you know, I'm just but saying a, a lot of games have builder, that. And that's, yeah. that's the game. It's, there's randomness in the deck that you draw. Sure. Um, but in Viticulture, if you draw a whole bunch of reds and you have a whole bunch of white grapes, like, you're... Uh, I guess. And I'm also coming from an angle of I have never had this happen. I've played the game mm. many times. I've never had it be that bad. I've it always, you know, been able to build my engine around it. It sounds like just diversify a little bit. And you're probably okay. Sneeze. I just didn't enjoy this game. as <laughs> mu- It was so overhyped is what it is. I, I not really, that great. I really enjoy Viticulture. We went back and played the Essential Edition what, in the last year or two, I think? Yeah, yeah, we reviewed it like a year and a half ago. And I was like, I still love this game. It's so elegant. Elegant. Played it with Essential Edition, added on to my first edition copy, still didn't enjoy it, sold it years ago. Okay. Uh, My number four is ranked either 71 or 41, depending on whether it's the revised (laughs) edition, which is 71, or 41, the OG edition. This game is ugly. If you do not play perfectly, you are miserable. And uh, it is it is punishing, and a lot of people love this game, obviously, by the ranking. And I just, I played the physical version once, and I played the app a bunch to try to get good at it, because I'm like, clearly it's me. And yes, it is me. Revised it. Uh, Agricola. Oh, I do yeah. not have fun I playing Agricola. I thought about it, because yeah. it's really high ranked. What was it? Oh, it's like 41. 40 oh, yeah. 41. number one for a long time. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I thought about it just because how high ranked it is, but I've only played it once. It's... So. It's really brutal. It's very punishing. Brilliant. You have to maximize all of your decisions. Have like those babies. Have every, lots of babies. Uh, but you got to feed them. Yep. You know? Well, uh, yeah. I jokingly <laughs> call <laughs> this misery farm, but like I yeah, am. That's I a am, common phrase for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I much prefer Caverna. Caverna, I was to say, me, is way better game. replace it with, because that's yeah. what I'd replace I it agree. with for sure. 100% would just mm-hmm. play Caverna 100 times over Agricola. This is the, uh, Still that, that is, Caverna. again, like an Arctic Scavengers thing that I would say where it, it is similar in a lot of ways and better in every it way. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it improves. It, it's Agricola and, right. you know, and it's not as punishing. It's still punishing. Mm-hmm. It's not as punishing. You don't have to maximize every single thing to even score positive points. Yeah. Uh, I j- and I also just never have had fun playing it. Mm. I just don't like Agricola. Sure. Well, plus, uh, whoever the artist is for Uwe Rosenberg, like it's yeah. pretty. I think it's Clemens. It's Franz. a little dry. Oh, yeah. it's bad. You got to really. It's clearly the look they want, though. It's the look they're going for. for games. I appreciate it, but yeah, it's if you spiced up the it's, artwork it's a little rough. bit, yeah. maybe it is rough. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it just felt very punishing. Uh, Caverna is way better. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah, Clemens Franz did the art. So my, that off the dome. my number four is a pretty obvious one. This actually is a game I've only played once. I said that, like, a Agricola I left off for that thing. I've only played it once, but I have watched people play it. Like, I've sat and watched people play it, and I've watched videos on YouTube of people playing it, and people just speak really highly of it. This is also a opposite of the culture of the new problem. The games that I would replace it with is just because they're so much newer than the original that they haven't mm-hmm. grown yet. I do think they will pass it eventually. Um, but this is the Eric Lang Simon trilogy game that I just think is the worst one, and that's Blood Rage. Uh, Blood Rage people love. 
It's a lot of people's favorite. I think it's the worst in the trilogy by far. Like, not even close. What th- other games? Ankh okay. is the newest one, and Rising Sun. Mm-hmm. That's the trilogy. Oh, what a stink bomb. Blood Rage is so much better than oh, Rising Sun. Oh, I disagree Sun. strongly with that mm. one. But that's not what I'm saying here. I'm just saying that Blood Rage, I think, ranked 40. There's only 39 games better than Blood Rage. I think it's crazy, especially yeah. since Ankh, which is all the way back at 261. Again, it's much newer. But sure. it's all the way back at 261 is a much better game. Ankh. Okay. Ankh has a chance of becoming my favorite game of all time. I think it's that good. Um, and Blood Rage did nothing for me. Now, mm. I do think it was partly a bad teach. I don't think... Oh, it's definitely a bad I teach. I didn't have a very fun time playing it. The pe- the people that were kind of teaching and stuff, like the people that were good at the game, I feel like we're just kind of running away with it while me and my brother who were playing were just mm-hmm. kind of like, we don't know the well, strategies Well, and people who here. are well-versed in Blood Rage know all of the cards in sure. the three levels of, right. of the deck. Exactly. So and trying difficult. to teach that to a new player and knowing what we need to keep an eye out for and what we need to be upgrading and stuff like this. Like, yeah. it's so much... We just got destroyed. Honestly, actually, in the last round, my brother somehow went all the way up to second place with his points in the, in the in like the last round, Sounds whatever like you call Loki it in that strategy. game. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I don't remember. But yeah, my biggest thing with this is just that a lot of people think it's the best in the trilogy, and I personally think it's the worst you in the will, trilogy. You will laugh at me later for telling you this, but again, and we've talked about this before, we need to play Blood Rage again. Yeah, I know. But without certain people. Sure, and while I agree with that, <laughs> I still have, like I said, watched it played many times, and I still understand the mechanics, and I just much enjoy the mechanics in the other I'm games. I'm not saying that it's going to change... Right, the, uh, the placement, but I won't, like, dislike it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. I think you will like it fine. Right. But it, I will not... I do not believe it would displace... It's also the least interesting theme and artwork for me out of three as oh, well. Sure. That does something for me, too. Theme always plays a part, and when you take mm-hmm. Egyptian, uh, feudal Japan, and um, uh, Vikings, Viking Valhalla, yeah. that mm-hmm. is by far the least interesting. Yeah, rate them in that order. Egyptian, feudal... Right. And, it, yeah, yeah. Honestly, same. I think that plays no, a big same part for me. for me. Same for me. I actually... I love Blood Rage. I am a big fan. I'm not one of those like huge fanboys sure. because I got into the game a bit late. Same. Um, but there, there's a couple things that make Blood Rage very difficult for new players. And it's that when you're drafting cards yeah. and you're looking at these cards and you don't know how to value them, right. mm-hmm. it makes it very, very yeah. difficult. Like so cancel the text of, a, of an enemy player's card. Experienced like, players simple, will run away amazing. with Blood Rage every single time you right. play. Yeah. And I almost feel like you have to play a round and then... Okay, now you know how those cards are going to work. Just Let's start over. It's one of those games that if you are teaching it, teach a bunch of new play players and don't play. Yeah, sit out and teach and and you that's know fair. and watch. That that's how I teach games like that because yeah. it's like, listen, I can play with you guys, but I'm going to destroy you. Are you yeah. sure yeah. you want that? That's how. You know, so yeah. that yeah. has happened every this time will I hurt. play it. Where <laughs> anybody who hasn't played has no idea. When or how to use those cards? It's yeah. very punishing. It's, rough. And it's very punishing. And I did not feel like the away. other two games had anything like that. Ankh and Rising Sun do not. Like Rising Sun has the tiles, and you have to choose, and you're giving other people and blah blah blah. But it just doesn't feel nearly. But Rising as Sun with the ally mechanic, yes, f- mitigates a lot of that. Sure, right. So mm-hmm. you can compensate. Anyway, uh, that was yeah. my uh, blood rage. That, that one hurt a bit, but I understand the number, complaints. That's <laughs> your number four. Mm. Yes. Number four, this is a neighbor to Dominion. It's one of oh, those, okay. like, evergreen, you know, millions of expansions. Um, I, I just hate the fact that you are only drawing one tile, Uh-oh. and you are Jonathan, placing it cover your on ears. a... Yeah, cover your ears, Jonathan, Oh, well, there is an official rule that changes that, but continue. Yeah, it's called open up your trash can and <laughs> throw it away <laughs> because... I drew all the, the tiles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Carcassonne is just... Like, uh, somebody said, well, you could just play this expansion and this expansion, and this game is great. It's like, right. or you could just play... Yeah, how much money have you put into Carcassonne at that yeah, point? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you can't yeah. spell Carcassonne without ass. Wow. Oh. <laughs> nice! <laughs> or carcass. <laughs> or carcass. <laughs> One carcass. Ugh, um, listen, you know, by the way, judge. You're into what you're into. <laughs> I forgot my number five uh, for Viticulture. A better game uh, is Twa. Just to uh, get that okay. out of the way from my previous one, Twa uh-huh. is a fantastic worker placement game. But for Carcassonne, uh, overhyped, uh, overrated. It is. Uh, there are so many other games, and this is a sleeper game I picked up at Gen Con five years ago. It's called Fields of Green. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good. Oh, we were just talking about tile that. placement. Um, much more a depth of thought. Mm-hmm. Y- you're you're not drawing one tile and you're screwed with it. You know whatever you get. Um, that's yeah, that's just, I'll never forget that. Just like, oh, that's all I can do with this. Um, 
So uh, Fields of Green, a fantastic replacement for my number four, Carcassonne. Carcassonne. So I also, I've, cows, I've got nothing else to say really about it. I also really didn't like that game. Carcassonne. And, and I, I, I was an honorable mention. I was trying to find other games to put on here. Do you find it that overrated, though? And like maybe... 20 years ago, 15 years ago, it was like, uh, super well, cool. I'm bringing up Euchre over like, here. You know, yeah, like, there are true. still a lot of people that say it's their favorite tile lane In game all fairness, and their favorite gateway game. I don't know about game. tile lane yeah. game or gateway game, but I will say, I, I said this at your house, out of all the class, the old classic games like Catan, Carcassonne, even Ticket to Ride I might throw in there, I do think Carcassonne is the best but do you out think, of all those. I just ugh. don't think that's saying much. Do you much? think there are 198, 97 right. games better than Carcassonne? No, I don't. I think there's only one game better. Better. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, Jonathan. <laughs> uh, so I will say also, not that it matters at all, but I do like there is an official variant rule where you draw three tiles and instead. One, yeah. um, and that does obviously, as you're saying, drastically improve the mm. game. I like Arkham um, Fine. But yeah, I, I, I'll play it. Uh. It's, it's a very simple, I mean, it plays in like. 30 minutes, and it's like if you're playing with your family, I think it's a good game for like a family night. But uh, yes, of course, it is not yeah. the the 198th best game ever made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mike. So number three. Top three. Top, Top three. three. We're this game has sold over 10 million copies. Uh -oh. Nice. Monopoly. Some people consider it one of the greatest gateway games of all time, and this one of the greatest designers so of all it's time. Got to be Ticket. But I cannot stand Ticket to Ride. Yeah, it's got to be Ticket. I like Ticket to Ride. That game fine. sucks. Collecting <laughs> cards of a set. So you're wrong because none of us like once it. Yeah, you, it's not overrated. <laughs> once I like you Ticket have enough. Oh, okay. So if your route is seven spots long, you need. Seven, seven matching blue. cards. Right. So yeah. if you have three blues, what do you do? You draw a card. Oh, I didn't draw a blue. Wait ten minutes. Draw a card. Ten well, minutes. I can't remember, blue. by ten the way. Ten minutes. Five Who minutes? are you playing I with? I don't know. You need I, can't I can't remember, three by minutes. the way. Is it only one action oh, per turn? Or is yeah. it two? Yeah. You, can, you can draw, uh, I believe it right. is. Two cards. Two cards, That's unless you take a caboose. Right, or top deck. Or you can top deck two. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can... Yeah, draw, but and if you draw from draw the pile, cards. if you take a wild, you can only take one. Still, don't if you draw from the visible, you need, but you so could top deck a wild. Right, you draw more cards, and then you still don't yeah. have what you need. So yeah. then you draw more cards. Yeah, that's not interesting. Yeah, that's not only not is that fun. not interesting, it is my literally. If we did a least favorite like ways to play a game, yeah, it is number one on my list. I draw hate playing and Ticket look. to Ride because. Every oh. time I play Ticket Ride, there's one person at the table who just draws cards every turn until they have 80 cards in their hand, and then they go, okay, I completed 10 routes. That was fun. You just drew cards mm -hmm. for 30 minutes and then played so, all your cards. And it's story. a 7.4. Funny what? story. A, 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 a tile lane game that is better than Carcassonne, I yeah. know, hard to do, uh, King Domino. Okay. okay, I've been okay. Domino. dying to play. Actually, I've been dying to play I, Queen Domino because it's they it's say it's okay. deeper. I haven't played but. Queen. Anyways, ironically enough, I won King Domino because I won a Ticket to Ride tournament nice. at the oh Village Well, nice. and that's where I met Spencer because hey. I beat him in that. It was oh, he nice. and I were one and two, nice. and I won King Domino. So weirdly all connected, kind yeah, of. Yeah, and I just sure. wanted to talk about how I wanted to get I the right tournament. I played King Domino <laughs> for the first time at Village World. Weirdest My copies for sale. The hour. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say really Would quick. Would you rather play that or Carcassonne? Oh, uh, King Domino. Okay. Yeah. I, I will say really quick, because while we're on Ticket to Ride, I do have Ticket to Ride... I can't remember what it's called, but it's uh, Rails and Sails, yeah. I think. And I do think it is a drastically better game. I think there's actually kind of strategy because at the beginning of the game, you have boats and you have trains, and you choose at the beginning of the game how many of each you have. And then you have to build your routes going through land and water. So at the beginning of the game, you're like, you look at your stuff and you're like, you're kind of playing, you're like, okay, I'll, I'll probably need more trains than boats, and you're doing this, and then that's what you have. There is a mechanic to trade out, but it, you know, it takes your action and stuff. Um, but it is a it is a much more strategic and prettier looking version than any that I've played, and so I do enjoy playing that version because the boats add a level of strategy I like. But overall, I agree, mm -hmm. Ticket to Ride is completely overhyped and rated both. Number two oh two, nice right. choice. My number Although three, it semi falls under the you know non gamers. <laughs> oh category. sure, 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 sure. <laughs> so my number three is by a designer that I absolutely love. It is the first game of his that I played. I've been in love ever since. Um, I don't care about the theme. The first time I played this game, I hated it. <laughs> then I played it again, then I backed it. Because how <laughs> did I play it? I feel like what I played jump. it before it was on Kickstarter, somehow. 
And I played it. I backed it on Kickstarter. Was it a reprint on Kickstarter? Uh-uh. But then they did do a reprint that really irritated me. So you might have played it like a Gen Con or something. Because it wasn't a reprint. They did a digital implementation of this game. And then they tried to snake in the people who who were already backers before the first time around uh, by giving you, like, alternative sculpts to the monsters in this game. And I'm like, well, that's stupid. And that just irritated me. And then this designer came out with two games that I like more. Wow. And so be- it's a Peterson. And it's I've a had, crossover. <laughs> I've had bad experiences just like Dan playing this game. And I've had really good experiences. But it's Blood Rage. Oh, oh Blood Rage is ranked gosh. 40. But nice. here's the thing is I really like Blood Rage. I really do. But it is overhyped because the people that love Blood Rage are like crazy Vikings. Yes. In a blood <laughs> They're <rage>. crazy Vikings. <laughs> uh, no, and, and honestly, Rising Sun is better. It's more complicated. It is like the... It, it, <laughs> it blows. <laughs> I like it more. I like the diplomacy yeah. aspect sure, of it. I like, sure. I like the... There's more interaction in that yeah. sense than not just, oh, oh you're here. I'm going to go here too. Yeah. Now we're going to fight. Um, I also think Ankh is far superior to... To both of those games, yeah. and yeah. it is ranked way lower. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah, it's still in the top 500. It will keep moving up, but it is it is really 200 up. plus spots behind Blood Rage. Yeah. And Ankh yeah. is a game that 220. When when I thought I might be at your house to play games, and I knew Caleb was bringing Ankh, it's you'll like, be there eventually. I'm it's, sure. <laughs> it's like uh, I'm gonna get Mike. I'm gonna look at Mike. We're yeah. gonna do this. I'm gonna look at Dan. We're gonna do this, and we are gonna play Ankh. Uh-huh. <laughs> like it's yeah. just what's gonna happen because mm-hmm. I know. Like, the experiences I have had playing... I've never had a bad experience playing Ankh. I've had bad experiences playing Blood Rage. Um, I think beginners can play Ankh with experienced people and not get decimated yes. and have terrible a terrible time like mm-hmm. you can with Blood Rage. You make a very That's good a point fact. about Blood Rage where it's like, if you are the... Well, I like what both of you suggest. One, just teach it if you are the experienced player. Yeah. Or two, if it's that bad at it. play around... And then go, hey, guys, we're going to just do a dummy round. Everybody, mm-hmm. we're just going to do this. Because mm-hmm. Blood Rage does play fast enough that you mm-hmm. could play a turn or even two after you do the draft so you can just kind of see how the cards work. Then you can shuffle everything up and, and go, this time for real. I don't think it would cure everything, but it would fix a lot of the, the problems that, n- that beginners uh, would have. Uh, but anyways... Uh, the and also the digital version of Blood Rage when they launched that second Kickstarter and then they were like oh but it's got alternative sculpts for the stuff and I'm like yeah, yeah. I like don't no like no how no. they did that campaign I no I no agree. no and that soured me a little bit on yeah. it uh, but I love Eric Lang I I love you know for the most part uh, I love most of his games and uh, yeah and Blood Rage was the first one that I played and then I went back and played Quarriers and Dice Masters and uh, and uh, other and it got a ridiculous amount of hype when it came out oh yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. That's... My number, this is three, right? Yep. My number three. Oh, maybe I late pledged Blood Rage. That's what it was. I played it and then late pledged. I don't know how I played it Tim, before. Tim, we need to get a little pledged. closer to each other because we're about to be attacked. Uh-oh. Okay. There we go. Let's go. <laughs> my Let's... number three is number 24 uh. Board Game Geek. <laughs> there are only it 23 is. games in the world. Better than Wingspan. I had to burn three quarters of my collection once this game <laughs> came out because I heard it was the greatest game ever made. Wingspan. You can it punch is. Now. It's Wingspan. Um, Wingspan is des- <laughs> Wingspan <laughs> is designed by Elizabeth Hargrave and published by Stonemaier Games. And I listen. It is fine. I, this is definitely a, a game that I don't dislike for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Like out of all the games on my list, I probably dislike this one the least. I, I, it is a good game that I just don't get why it's amazing. Like the 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 biggest excuse that people tend to say as to why it's an amazing game is because it got so many people into the hobby. That's cool. That doesn't make it a great game. That's awesome for the social aspect of the hobby. How does that make it a great game? I don't understand that. All. Ticket to Ride mm. got a lot of people into the hobby. Uh-huh. Like I just pandemic got a lot of people into yeah. the hobby. Oh, that wanna... doesn't make it a great game. And I just Wingspan is a good engine builder. I just don't think it's this crazy best engine builder ever designed thing. The cards are pretty. I don't care about birds at all, but the cards are pretty. Um, I like that they have hit, like facts about the birds on it. Like, oh, this fact can only be found in the northern region of South Africa or whatever. Like, okay, that's cool. I like um, the art. I yeah. like the flavor text. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I don't. You, so you like the game? It's a great so game. I, yeah, <laughs> rank twenty four. It's a great game. Yeah, it's a great game. I Can't would say help. it's a rank twenty four great game. That's not. <laughs> it's, it is a very good game. Um, but you sound like the people from earlier where you're like, well, of course, Gloomhaven would be number one because the people who play Gloomhaven would say it's number one. Like, 
Wingspan is a great game. Everything you just said about it, it was what makes it a great game. And that cube trickle mechanic, brilliant. What yeah, other yeah, game yeah. does that? I, that I, is I wouldn't amazing. say brilliant, but it's, it's clever. Amazing. Sure. Uh, yeah. Terraform your Mars? Doesn't that do a trickle thing? No, no he's saying how it's like you have your engine and you you, you activate oh, it from sure. right to you left. Trickle, sure. yeah. um, that's what he's saying. Brilliant. Sure. I, I actually, there is a game that played Next, this called like Enharmonic or something. But, uh, oh! <laughs> as far as <laughs> like any niche any tabletop games, since Wingspan came out, is the most sold board game. That's awesome. That is the definition of overhyped and rated, is what you just said. So I, I, I enjoy a Wingspan a lot, and I'm not going to disagree that it's sure. overrated. Um, I mean, it like collapsed the market when it came out. Uh -huh. It's not that good. It's good. It's not good enough to collapse a market. That's all I'm saying. Uh -huh. um, so anyway, I don't have a game to play instead. I didn't write anything here. I don't know. Just any, play Wingspan. Any Just engine builder. Don't get as excited That's about it. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I can't think of an engine builder off the top of my head right now, so I just, whatever. Play <laughs> Dice Realms. There you go. <laughs> so um, I had to, yes, we had a board game night a couple nights ago, and Dan brought up Monopoly, which was, was my number three. Because I had a lot of games in here that I was like, okay, well, like I have to talk about Monopoly because like it is so overhyped, or it's or, I'm sorry, not overhyped. <laughs> yeah, over. Woo! It is so overrated. <laughs> there is a Monopoly for everything, and Dan made me think. I said, I, I can't do Monopoly anymore because he has a really good point that people who are excited about Monopoly are clearly not like versed in the hobby of board gaming. Uh -huh. So I had to take an objective look. It's still in my notes at number three because Monopoly is such an overrated game. Mm -hmm. But I do have to say at my number three, and it is bittersweet that I have to agree with you, Wingspan. Yeah! <laughs> I was not expecting. Here, I'll do it. Yes! I was not expecting that at I all. Had to <laughs> I love it. He was so mad at you. <laughs> I know. That's why he did it. <laughs> I was mad because. He was defending this Friday. It's, it's my favorite game of, like, everybody that I want to introduce to board gaming will play Wingspan. This is one of my ten. That is, it's not a bad thing that this is overhyped. I got so excited when I saw Wingspan at Target. I, I mean, I knew I was going to see it at Barnes & Noble. And I remember during the pandemic going to Barnes & Noble and just looking for this game because, like, it was not there. Mm -hmm. Like, you could not find it. And, like, I'm so happy that uh, Wingspan is bringing people into right. gaming with something that is such a strange theme. And is accessible again. It's accessible. It's really easy. Stonemaier Games... Uh, how I start every Stonemeyer game is, you know what I love about this game is even if you get confused, you only have four choices. So just if you don't know what to do, don't be the person that says, well, I don't know, so I'm just going to do this. But like, just do one of the four. You will always get something. Yeah. And that is, um, that is what makes Stonemeyer games great games. Um, I, I almost feel unless bad putting, unless it's Viticulture. <laughs> um, I almost wanted to put Red Rising at number three because I was oh. so hyped for it. And then I got stung because I had never played the game that it was based off of. I assume you're talking about Fantasy Realms? Fantasy Realms. They're like, it plays just like Fantasy Realms. And I looked up Fantasy Realms and it had a good rating. And then I got, I, I ordered the Collector's Edition. And I feel like I got burned because I feel like I ordered that a game that was. Collector's Edition is terrible. It was like so underwhelming. It was like, oh, that's the game. I'm just drawing which cards. Which sucks even worse because you can get Fantasy Realms, which yeah. is the game is based on, for like 20 and bucks. is better yeah. for super cheap. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to look at it objectively. Wingspan is a little bit I over it. I love it. I hyped. I don't think it's overrated because I think it's a wonderful game. <laughs> it's uh, your number two. <laughs> my game is is highly uh, built off of the the wingspan the yeah. the, the cube bouncing inspired, inspired, inspired by, by wingspan. Yeah. It's 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 an amazing game, and that's why Not yours, this is my. Saying. Well, that too. It is a highly <laughs> praised, overrated, uh -huh. overhyped number three. Really, really so. good game, but maybe a one-hit wonder from that designer because Mariposa is not that interesting or good. Yeah. Yeah, that's <coughs> another one I would say is fine. Yeah. But that one at least isn't hyped and overrated. Cool theme, though. Like, I love how you, uh, you travel north and then yeah. you come back south thematically. Uh, how, do, how do you say it? I call it Mar Mar Mariposa's. Yeah, Mariposa's. I don't know. Um, Something like that. But I was, that was really cool, too. I was doing fine. 
up until Andrew's flip flop. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I had to be honest with myself. It was the tr- it's the Traitor. truth. Wow, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll still okay. play it with you. Come to the I mean, I agreed that it was overrated, but I didn't put it on my list. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> number two. You oh. changed my mind on a lot of things that night. Well, that sounded really. <laughs> 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 Listen. Um, <laughs> number the tape. I'm two sorry. <laughs> um, is number 171 by Pandasaurus Games. Uh, its first Dan. campaign, oh. it brought half a mil. And then the hype just started rolling. Oh, uh, it's a beautiful game. It looks mm. great. It has some of my favorite coins ever in a game. So then they did a second Kickstarter and raised $2 million. I was part of that. $2.5 million for a game that falls so flat, it's Dinosaur Island. I, I completely mm. agree. What? I agree. Compl- I, go- I completely agree. I wanted, I was so, <laughs> I love Dinosaur Island. I was so hyped to get this game. Like, I mean, I'm unboxing it and I'm just excited. You know, that excitement when you're unloading a box. Dinosaur Island game got me so excited just to like punch everything out and like, oh, and learn the rules and. And it's so colorful, and the components are amazing, and it has worker placement, and it has variable workers, and the workers left over, you can do your own little worker placement thing on your board. And, and all that seems like boards. it so, should be so cool, but I have a problem with a game that has no replayability. And to me, Dinosaur Island has no replayability, and mm. this is why. There are tons of different dinosaurs that this game comes with. None of them do anything different. Right. There's three types, right? Carnivore. Herbivore and omnivore, And the right? only thing that makes them different is the resources that you need to acquire right. them. And their danger level. What security level or right. danger level you have to have for them to not break out. Mm-hmm. And, and how people. big of a paddocks you need to hold it. That's not a choice. That's the illusion of choice. Because as I'm mm. playing the game, it's do I raise my security level this round or do I raise my paddock? I'll raise my paddock this round. Next round, do I raise my security this round or my paddock this round? Well, I did paddock last round, so I'll do security. Round three, do I raise my security this round? There's no choice there. It is a linear game Well, there's game literally play. a choice, but it's two. It's <laughs> the same two choices every <laughs> round for every game you'd ever play, including the big old totally liquid expansion with all these neat old dinosaurs, and they all have different sculpts. But the only difference... And even the Kickstarter dinosaurs is how much, how big does your paddocks have to be? How much security do you need? And what resources do you need to acquire them? They could all be pebbles laying on the board, and there would be no difference other than the resources needed to acquire them. I was so let down by this game. I still own it, need to sell it, haven't because I love looking at it, mm. and I just. Oh, I'm so disappointed. I'll say two things on that so real quick. First of all, I think it's hideous. I hate that art style, but oh, I know I'm in the mass minority there. Uh, second of all, uh, might have my favorite dice in any game, though. I yes. love those dice. dice. Those DNA uh, dice. What great. is it? Amber? Those amber uh-huh. dice. I love it. Um, I have played this game four times, I think. It has completely fallen flat, like you said, yeah. three of the four times. And the only time, the only reason it didn't fall flat the fourth time is because I was at my brother's house and I brought it over to teach him because he's a Jurassic Park nut. And I was playing it up the whole time. I was making everything sound awesome. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was trying to make him enjoy the game. And he did. But like, it only didn't fall flat because I was exaggeratingly yeah. trying to sell it. <laughs> I was marketing it, you know, because um, I really wanted to have fun. He doesn't get to play board games very often. I was like, it's Jurassic Park, the game, you know. Um, but I, I agree falls flat every time. I did recently get Dinosaur World. I'm super excited to try it out, though. The stuff that it has changed looks like positive changes. Yeah, now you can upgrade your paddock, your security level. Or your Jeep. Or your Jeep. (laughs) Yes, sir! (laughs) Ah, man. I have no idea what... I mean, I I like Dinosaur Island. I did not have that experience that you had. But I, I Now, that being said, the... I have yet to even get into the Totally Liquid expansion, because the problem with that for me is that that game was so hard to get into the box yeah. after punching that I'm afraid to it's even impossible. open it. <laughs> I'm blown away that I, I've, now that I finally have some Zippo baggies, I can actually close Dinosaur World with everything <laughs> in it. It took me a while. Uh, so yeah. my number two game by a uh, game company, a publishing company that I absolutely love most of their games. <laughs> uh, this is a game that was ridiculously hard to get 
And when we got a copy, we got a copy. We were at a, uh, a we were at a, a gaming convention in uh, St. Louis, and they had this game as uh, that one of their play to win games. And the problem was at Geekway, sometimes people will sit on a game, right? Like a play to win game. Like, oh, we're just going to keep it in our group, and we're going to keep getting entries, yeah. you know, so we can right. try to like win this when game. When you return it, I'll check it out. That kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. So we went to a uh, a very very famous online place that has brick and mortars famously in St. Louis because that's where they're based out of. We went there, picked mm. up this game for less than MSRP because that's what they do at this store. Then I was not in the room when it happened, but uh, mm -hmm. we had a copy Hamilton, the, of the this board game, game. <laughs> in a pile of games. My wife and her sister and brother-in-law, they're all playing uh, a different game. And somebody sees this game in their stack and starts yelling at them and telling oh, them that they're horrible people for sitting on this game and not taking it back to the library yes. when it was our personal copy that was still in Mother Flip and Shrink. I, it ruined my convention experience. Like It is a convention wow. that I used to love to go to, but it was like just diminishing, 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 and then that happened. And I don't know if I can ever get my wife to go back. Wow. Wingspan. People were so insane for Wingspan because they couldn't get it and it's, it, you know, Stonemaier Games, you know, they did a small print run. Fine. You don't know what's going to happen. Everybody flips out, right? Oh, I got to have this. It's going for hundreds of dollars on the secondary market. You know, and it's like, oh, 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 we walk into a game store. There it is on the shelf. Now, yeah. granted, it is the game store. And we just so we were like, we're in the town where this company is based. Let's mm -hmm. check out this store. Yeah. yeah. So we go there. I don't know. Paid 35 bucks for it. Right. Insane. When. when Assholes, pardon my French, are yeah. paying you know hundreds selling it, <laughs> whatever, whatever we selling it for hundreds of yeah. dollars, and then in a in a game convention which is supposed to be all about like brotherhood and like let's just have fun. And I tried to report people, you know, report these people for this because it was just terrible behavior. Because yes, we saw people hoarding that game the whole con. I didn't say anything to them. I go, well, that sucks, and kept walking. You know, like you don't jump on people because you don't know what's going on. They yeah. didn't know it. And then when they got exposed, right? It's like egg. it's like this is our game. We own it. They're like, "Oh," and walked out. Didn't even apologize. So screw those people. And I like playing Wingspan, but my experience is always colored by wow. that. It was way overhyped. Wow. You know, you are a great storyteller. Do you want to DM uh Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. And uh, but anyways, <laughs> it is ranked 24. It is an excellent engine builder. Yep. It, there is there's a lot to really like about Wingspan. I am so glad now we are so far removed from it that it, it, the hype has died down. Yep. I do think it is overrated. I don't think it should be 24. Is it a top 100 game? Yes. yes. It is not a top 50 game, in my opinion. Sure. Uh, I get that people love it. I love that it brings people into the hobby because I am all about that. Let's bring people into the hobby. It's very accessible. It, it kind of tricks you into doing some very complex things. Mm -hmm. Uh, by making it very simple to do these things, yep. right? Uh, and I love games that are deceivingly complex, you know, because it, you know, like, oh, yeah, I'm doing this, this, and it's like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> you're playing such, a, you know, such a heavier game than you think you're playing. And yeah. I think that that's really brilliant. But I also think that as a designer, she's overrated because she, she had this really great hit, and there's just kind of been crickets yep. since. Yep. So, wingspan. I've told that story before. Uh, but yes, 24, that is my number two overrated game of all time. Uh, yeah, going right into it. My number two, I really thought for a while that Bob was the only real pusher of this game. He loves this game. Oh, by the way, Bob, yeah, get ready to cry again. Um, uh, he, he loves it way too much. Um, I think you like it too. Access but I really, I really just kind of thought it was like this little thing. Then I find out it's, it's, it's 10. It's oh. in the top 10 oh. best games oh. of all time. Oh. Oh. It is by R. Eric Roos. Don't have to say your last name. I apologize. By Greater Than Games, and that is the cooperative game Spirit Island. Oh, it's mm. fine. It's fine. Top 10, no. Tim? No. Top no. 10 in the world? No. Madness. No. Well, there's the Kickstarter delusion. Sure. Like, you paid for exactly. it. You bought the but hype. You are that. buying for people to... <laughs> But there's really not too much to say here. It's just it's a difficult co-op. I've played it like three times, I think, and it has just fallen flat for I, me every time. Well, I don't so get it. It's a game that I want to love more than I do because sure. I love the idea, right? You are trying to stop the colonizers, right? You are the spirits of the island, and you are trying to you know, push, them out. push people out. And like in theory, it's really neat. I just I played it. It's fine. Yeah, you have, you have asymmetric 
thingies. But it it's, didn't do it's enough like area control y kind of thing. It didn't thing. do enough it's, for me to like blow my mind like it has Bob's. Again, there's not really much to say here except that I did not know it was the top ten game of all time and uh, it's just it's it's mediocre to me. I would much rather play Robinson Caruso. I'd much rather yeah. play um uh, Planet Apocalypse. I would much rather play even the one that you've never won, the little square ghost one. Stories? Yeah, ghost stories. Like yeah. I just don't ghost understand the hyper so on Spirit Island. I got so mad the first time I played that I just stopped. Ghost <laughs> stories? I got so mad it I was like kicked your butt hard. Ghost stories there. is brutal. Yeah. Kicks you in the so, teeth. So oh, so nonstop. Yeah. I'm surprised by this one because I have not played Spirit Island and I um I admittedly have not played nearly as many co op games as you guys and you mm. guys love them way more than me. So I actually didn't expect that. I thought, I thought you guys would have good things to say about Spirit. That's Island. fine. So uh, again, it's fine. I would even go so I even far down to say mediocre, kind of lackluster. I just mm. top ten is what kills me here. That's mm. insane. Yeah. And there's a large barrier to entry as well, right? Mm. It's very rule yeah. heavy. Yeah. Uh, that, that I, uh, yeah. Okay. There's, there's some complex things going on. I think for people like you and I, like right, it's exactly. It's hard for me to kind of get out of that mind set. Uh, but also though, it's you know. It's not the easiest game to find all the time, and then if you want everything for it, you're paying a lot of money. I also don't like the art direction it took, but I understand a lot of people do. Like Bob I, loves I, it. I like the art, fine. Yeah, but. but anyway, all right, number two. That's it. Yeah, number that was two, it. Andrew. All right, what what yeah, what no, game are you going to reluctantly only, jump on they, the bandwagon? No, I I only took back once. Uh, this one is is obvious. One, I hate connecting like uh, locations <laughs> together, and two, I just hate trains. Oh, ticket to ride. Oh, there you go. Uh, I bought it. For my grandparents, and we played it once, and it was cute. And I will, I would rather not play any game at all right. than play Let's Ticket just sit to and Ride. Talk Honestly, I'd rather talk and, and just tell build. me about the war, Grandpa. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I'd rather, yeah, I'd rather just acquire wisdom from my tell grandparents. Me about diversity. Yeah, tell me about anything, but I do not want to play Ticket. I'm just looking at it. Oh, and I'm yeah, that's right. There. No, 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 that's Europe. God. Look yeah, behind you. <laughs> everywhere. Oh, oh I do like Ticket word. to Ride Europe. I own Europe. I do not own the United uh, States version. Yeah, it's just like uh, maybe I'm stung because like I own Brass Birmingham at home. I've never played it, but like I have such a negative taste in my mouth from Ticket to Ride. I'm just like I don't want to play games with trains on them because yeah. it's just like it's that's, not interesting to me. That's the other thing. Since we're talking about it again, by the way, I remembered I said I like rails and sails quite a bit more than the mm -hmm. rest of them. The, the interesting thing about rail sails too is double sided board. I think one side is like the whole United States or whatever, but the backside, the main reason I got it is because it is the, like, Midwest, like, it's, it's uh, you know, northern Indiana, southern Michigan, Lake Michigan. Oh, it's, right. like, our area. Mm. Sure. And, like, so there's cities I recognize is what you're connecting stuff. Gotcha. So I just found that really cool. So I could and despise then, my Midwest exactly, region. Exactly. Yeah. And then it introduced the boat mechanic. But, yes, gotcha. anyway, we yep. can all agree, take it to ride. Uh, you <laughs> want to play another game that's, like, intro? Uh Carcassonne, Dominion. <laughs> oh. Like, like it. You're gonna have a better time. Like, and you're, it's so easy to find. Go buy Dominion. So and you're saying you they should play Arctic Scavengers. Got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or Arctic Scavengers, or <laughs> dice, just, or just Dice Realms, which is kind of the you know, kind of the new together. one. Um, yeah. There's so many like evergreen big box, <laughs> like or not big box, but just like you can yeah. go and buy something way better, even from Target or. Does it blow your mind that there's a $100 collector's edition of Ticket to Ride with like? Like each each one cool. has their well like color different. Well, you know, my okay. monopoly was the Millennium Monopoly, oh, where the okay. where the money was super Gucci, and I was gonna go really fancy on that. The hundred anniversary yeah. or whatever, tenth anniversary. tenth anniversary. Sorry, the hundred dollar tenth anniversary game. It, it is amazing. It is. Oh yeah, high we bought it for my in laws. <laughs> yeah, I used to yeah. own it. It's I'm not really only good. hurt. I'm offended. There's a hundred dollar version. <laughs> of tickets are high. Yeah. It's really oh, well produced. Gosh. It's bad because I I make like if people say like oh I play. Board games. I'm like, oh, what do you play? Ticket to Ride, Carcassonne, right. like, Catan. Uh, Catan. They're like, yeah, I love those games. And I'm just like, awesome. Let's it's, right. it's really Come hard over to and like, I'll show you like yeah. the games. next step. Well, exactly. It's really hard to try to help someone enjoy something, like be upgraded without coming off as rude S or right. smug. Yeah, exactly. Like it's just like the. Sure, they were good in their time. Exactly, but Clue? I don't even think I don't even think Ticket to Ride was good in its time. Oh, like it's just yeah, I just. Yeah, I didn't it play it. It in doesn't hold. Time, so. <laughs> I mean, it's on my list, so I agree. But like, there's some of those older gateway games I played late into the hobby. That was one of them. But like, I only played Catan for the first time four years ago, and I still love it. So um, I like Catan. Uh, yeah. I, I think I played it for the first time more recently than that. Even I played it, the Game of Thrones ca uh, version, and this and the uh, Star Starfares Fares. version all within the same few months of each other. Yeah, Catan's still good. All right, like number Catan. one.
Number one, most overrated, most overhyped. This is both. You were going to slay a cow that I wanted to kill and didn't because I haven't participated oh, you saw enough it? in this. I did just see it. Please, please. I, are, I just want to feed off of this. Number two all time. <laughs> oh, I'm Before I, Gloomhaven I sh I came out, I need this a straw. Was the greatest game oh, of all time. It starts with a P, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> because I'd rather pee on this game than play it. It's Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Come on now. Overrated. I, like, sure. Pandemic just right. isn't sure, that but interesting sure. of yeah. a game. I find it far too abstract to enjoy. Really? Yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed Pandemic when I hadn't played I games played that did a similar things like Dominion. Yeah. And then it's like, no, no, no. There's better versions of this that I would rather play. Yeah, I played it a few times. I'm like, eh, Pandemic's okay. <laughs> But then everybody started hyping up Legacy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh. People said this is their greatest gaming experience it was of also, all time. It was I have to try this. It's also like the first big Legacy game like the start. Like I believe um, Risk Legacy was first, but it didn't explode like Pandemic. Correct. Yeah, did. this Correct. definitely Correct. catapulted the Legacy category mm -hmm. and, and really put it on the map. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> wow. But I played it with one, gr one other person. We played like four months, and I was just kind of like, okay, some of this stuff added is kind of cool, but I'm still playing Pandemic. Uh -huh. like, yeah. And Pandemic just isn't that interesting of a game to me. Mm -hmm. So Stone. then I played it again. <laughs> I didn't destroy anything. I played it again. I got up to eight months, and I still was like, okay, all this stuff I've added is cool, but I'm still playing Pandemic, uh -huh. which isn't that good of a game to me. If you love Pandemic, that I can see why Pandemic Legacy is one of your favorite experiences of all time. But if Pandemic is just an okay game for you... That you want to play 12 times. You're not yeah. going to go into Pandemic Legacy and be blown away by it. You're mm. still going to go, this game is just okay. So two attempts at getting through the campaign, I gave up on both. I, I sold my in-shrink copy of Season 2 because I found it cheap a while ago and I finally offloaded it. I just... Do not get the hype for mm -hmm. this game. I, I don't liked Pandemic till I played Defenders of the Realm, and if I never have to play the Pandemic of, again, that's fine. Is Defenders now older? Defenders is not older than okay. Pandemic. Okay, I thought it. I uh, thought it had an older version, but um, this is think. this is one that I strongly disagree with. But again, that's the point of overrated, right? I I would rate uh, Pandemic Legacy extremely high. I don't think it feels enough like Pandemic at all. Like, yes, the base mechanics are the same, but the actual story you're going through, the changes you're doing, I think they truly story's change the feel good. of the game. Yeah, the story's pretty good. I mean, uh, I, I talked about it. I mean, spoiler alert for an extremely old game now. Um, when we first, like, when a character first died in our campaign, like, it wasn't even a character we were playing. It was a character that was, like, a, someone we were talking to that was, like, doing missions with us and stuff like this. And when mm. they died, and, like, the game tells you, rip up this card, like, like, my group like had an emotional response to like, holy crap, Jerry died. Like Jerry. it was, like, it was I, I just made up a name right there. Yeah. But like, I really think they did a great job of making you care about what was happening and making the mechanics not feel like pandemic, which is why I said I strongly disagree. I don't think it feels like pandemic, but it is overrated, sure, because it was like the legacy game and everyone still talked about it to this day, especially because there are legacy games that have come out that have failed. You know, like Seafall, I think is what it's called, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And like, so people Famously. say like, wow, this game's garbage. Games, can, Legacy games can be as good as Pandemic Legacy, right? Like, so I can see why that even ups the hype and stuff even more. I haven't played it. So Pandemic came out 2008, Defenders of the Realm 2010. Oh, okay. So they're real close, yeah. right? Uh, Defenders of the Realm just does Pandemic better. Like I played, I, when I first got in the hobby, my sister loaned me her copy of Pandemic. So this would have been like 2011, 2012-ish, right? And I was like, oh, this is really cool. Like, because I played Pandemic, DC Deck Builder, like Catan. We're like the getting into the hobby like I am now, not counting playing Magic and D&D &D and other role-playing games and even Hero Quest back in the day, right? Um, and thought Pandemic was really great. Then I played Defenders of the Realm, and I'm like, is it not 90% <laughs> theme, though, that did that for you? Because the mechanics are mainly the same, they're, right? They're similar, but the way the, asymmetric, the way the asymmetric player powers work are more interesting to me. Sure. Uh, the theme helps. Right. Uh, but I also, you're not, I mean, so Pandemic, yes, you're pushing around cubes. And in Defenders, you're moving minis. Right, but that's uh, what I'm saying, though, is is what I'm trying to say is when you get to the Legacy Pandemics or even the other versions of Pandemic, one, that's one of the things I think it does so great is that they don't feel the same. You know, like Pandemic Legacy the, the really does change the way you're feeling. Or if you play Pandemic Cthulhu, 
it, it's yeah, I really the, it's do the same wanna, mechanics. I really do want to play the Cthulhu Rising. But it does feel different. Uh, um, Pandemic Legacy Season 0, I've only played the tutorial for it now twice, but it feels completely different with the way you're going out to stop spy networks and you're mm -hmm. driving around these vehicles and stuff. Like It's the it's the same base mechanics, and yet they all feel completely different sure. to me. That's just my defense for no, it. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, my number one uh, is not Pandemic uh, Legacy Season 1, even though I was tempted to season, have it on there. I'm two. wondering if it's just Pandemic. <laughs> season 2. Uh, and it's not Pandemic. Okay. My number one is rated number 5 on BGG. I don't know that This one. is a game that is... Oh, I do know that one. That is really hey, good. Tim. Joint. Really good. Uh, Overhyped. You need... You actually... You have to upgrade your components for this game to basically be playable. Um, it's ugly as sin. I play it a lot, but I've gotten to the point where I don't like playing it with other people. I'd rather play it solo. Uh, Which because, is undoable for me. So <laughs> Because it makes... Be, well, because the, the amount of AP that can go into this game and make it drag out yeah. and overstay its welcome is, drag. is rough. Uh, there are better versions now of this that... Well, I wouldn't even. I hate the comparisons between Ark Nova and Terraforming Mars. Yeah. Because the only thing I think they have in common are the tags, you know, for like. Yeah. And the high cost of cards, ranging from thirteen to thirty-five. <laughs> right. Right. But I just feel like Terraforming Mars, unless you buy all this other stuff to go into it to make it better. Right, including expansions, not just co component upgrades. But right, like, but including. Oh, you need to play with Prelude and stuff like that. You know, I play Terraforming Mars. I like it. I own it. I think it's fine. Is it a top 100 game for me? Maybe. But it's not, a, it's not top five. Holy smokes. Wow. Like, no. There are 100 games I would rather play than, than Terraforming Mars. That and is so unexpected. I will sit down and play Terraforming Mars solo. I would rather play Ark Nova, which potentially runs just as long, but did not feel as long for me. And we when, should play again sometime when we, soon. When we played Ark Nova. You know, like. Wow. I I think the only thing you need to add to Terraforming Mars is the prelude. Right. Everything right. else, and everything and else is like layer, extra. Oh, and the dual layer player board. Right, the player board does suck. The and lowest quality. And if you play your game of any three game times, your played. components are wearing. Yeah. You know, I, I shouldn't be as hard on it. It was made in Indiana, like you know, like and really, and by a science teacher. Yeah. Fun fact. Oh, but teachers suck. Yeah, teachers blow. Make it. <laughs> Make it better, you know? Like, Stronghold had a bona fide hit on their hands. That's great. Yep. It's a good game. It's not the number five game. It is overrated to me. Blah, 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 blah. I lost. I quickly, like, I played it. I really enjoyed it. I played it a bunch, and then I kind of lost interest. My wife is, like, 15 and 2 on me right now. She crushes me at Terraforming Mars. Sure. And playing a two-player Terraforming Mars is awful. <laughs> it's so long. I like playing it with more people. Sure. Um, I don't... I feel like it's overrated, but maybe like top twenty. Sure, I don't know. About I that. think <laughs> really. Yeah. What? What? So uh, Dan, I'll go what into it. Dan, so first of all, yeah. you would you would recommend Ark Nova? I guess was your yeah. kind of throwaway. Okay, yeah, pass me the ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my number one is Terraforming Mars. Uh, <laughs> I actually adamantly this was one of my biggest disappointments because wow, uh, I actually I saw this at. Um, Village Well. Uh-huh. And uh That's and where I, I got my copy. Yeah, and I bought it there. I talked I talked Catherine into like, look at this game, it's so pretty. Like like I mean like to get the metal pieces and the systems and everything. I was like, Oh, this is this is gonna be great. I even test played a couple rounds there and I was like, Oh, this is interesting. I like this engine building. And it is now like one of my least liked games. Wow. I my biggest problem with it is I think it terribly overstays its welcome. Uh -huh. It is far too long uh -huh. for the kind of game it is. And then if you if you want to play it the better way, which is instead of getting your hand, Solo. you draft. Well, what oh, I'm saying sure. is, so you introduce oh that, that the draft, makes it then that makes it take it, an hour. It makes plus the game longer. drastically better and adds at least forty minutes yeah. to a game that I already think is overly long. It is just far too long. By the way, um, published by Stronghold and designed by Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to say your last name. Frixelius. Frixelius. There you yeah. go. Um, but yeah, I just I I can't I can't do it. Digital came out. Yeah, I got digital free. for free recently. Got it for free. Yep. You can play Terraforming Mars in 25 minutes. I love it. It's blowing my mind. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing it so fast. Um, but anyway, and enjoying it. So my biggest game, I I preach this game to people who love it, um, and I have gotten some pushback. Jonathan was like, I don't think they're that similar. I get it. But I would highly recommend Underwater Cities. Oh yeah, Underwater Cities is the for, clear I keep replacement. hearing about this as like a competitor. Clear replacement for yeah, 
it is honestly not the same. It has similar feelings, and when you pile all those similar feelings together and then play it, to me, it feels like Terraforming Mars, feel, but better in every way. I think way. it feels more like Terraforming Mars than Ark Nova does. Sure. To me. Um, the, the main differences are that Underwater Cities has worker placement. Mm. Um, so as you're getting your cards, so like you can't actually play your card in front of you. It's not like an action. You have to go to a worker spot to mm. play your card in front of you, mm. um, and you get other things that you're building up and everything. There's, um, there's an open market which isn't in um, Terraforming Mars. Um, you actually, your player board, you're actually building your underwater city using like, you know, dome pieces and yeah. bridge pieces and stuff. Like you're building it on your player board. So that's different. Um, but at the end of the day, it is a, it is a tableau building, engine building um, a game about kind of terraforming. It has that same kind of feel. Instead of terraforming Mars, you're terraforming your ocean into mm -hmm. your underwater city, right? Um, and they just feel extremely similar to me, and Underwater Cities mm. is better in every way. And the, also the thing is, Underwater Cities plays almost as long as Terraforming Mars. Don't feel it for a second. Well, that's really. kind of like my thing with Ark Nova. Ark Nova did not feel that long when we right. played. Yeah. Right, know. That's just, I've played, uh, like I said, I've played Terraforming Mars, I don't know, I want to say like 15-ish times or something yeah. like that, and I've probably played Underwater Cities like 10-ish to 12-ish times now, and I just... I love it every time. I, I love it. Mm -hmm. um, there is evidently there has there was a broken strategy on release where a, a certain resource, if you collected it, would start a never-ending cycle that you could win the game, and that has been like uh, there's been like an errata mm -hmm. with how you collect that resource. So that sucks when that happens. It tends to happen in Stonemaier games a lot. <laughs> um, even though I love his games, almost every game release, like a week later, it's like okay, now here's the nerfs <laughs> yeah. to this stuff. Um, but anyway. That's uh, that's my spiel. Terraforming Mars is not a top five game, and I I'm sad that I didn't write down what Underwater Cities was. It is a much better game and to me. I will also caveat with my with my uh, Terraforming Mars being the number one. It is because it is the highest ranked right. game it's, on my list. Same thing for me. It's not my biggest disappointment. I mean, like right. I said, it is a huge oh, disappointment yeah. actually for me. Yeah. But it is, it is number five. I went BGG order. Okay. You know? yeah. Underwater Cities is ranked 43. 43 is actually really good. Yeah. I was expecting it to be over 100. I'm super happy. I'm hoping that it eventually takes it over. That's all I'm I'd like saying. to point out that I did choose my order. This is not BGG rank yes. order. And I Mike was and that I... disappointed <laughs> by <laughs> Pandemic Legacy <laughs> Season <laughs> 1. Hey, no one's perfect. What's <laughs> yours? Hey, this is Mine? the last one yeah. of the show, yeah. so it better well, be good. So I went with, okay, so we had the Monopoly conversation earlier. Uh -huh. And I said, okay, I'm not going to go as far into Monopoly, but like, I'm not going to do a Top 100 board game geek. Like I'm, I'm gonna mm -hmm. meet it somewhere in the middle for people who have played board games, party games, stuff like that. And I think we can all agree oh, if no. you guys could take back your decisions for your number one choices. <laughs> Done. Uh, let me let me preface this with: I hate games, party games that start like ho ho ho, that was great, and then by the fourth round you're like. Oh. Is this the black and white oh. game? Is that what you're about to I talk think about? I you played Michelle Obama's arms. That was funny. Number one, most overhyped, most overrated game, Cards, Cards Against, against humanity. humanity. Okay. Like, even uh, B Movies mm -hmm. has the quick diminishing returns of, like, mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> he said something dirty. <laughs> he said something. Like, he played this card. We all got a good laugh. And I, I, games that, that come to a, not to a stop, but games that come to like a, okay, one more round, and then yeah. we'll just call it Cards Against Humanity. Okay, it could be argued that Apples to Apples kind of started that for me. I was about me. to say, yeah, is that yeah, your yeah. replacement for it? Um, but like, Cards, <laughs> Cards Against, against humanity, humanity is more fun than Apples to Apples. Yeah. But, yeah. but like... If you get a whole bunch of people who have already played Cards Against Humanity, it's like it's not even fun. Like it's the novelty you've read is all worn the, off. The novelty is worn off, and now you just have a paperweight. And they've they've released so many expansions. It's like overhyped, overrated. It takes up too much space on uh, on retailers' shelves. Uh, it's also got to be like the most parodied game ever now, like Crabs oh, yeah. Against yes. Humility. humility. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like well, there's so many. But ev but almost every party game now is some sort of yeah. you look at a card and it's got a word judgment on it. And then like a judgment game where yeah. it's like, ah, like it just does not feel good. There are, you are making the board game scene look kind of simple sure. and it's 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 not a uh it's it's not a game that i would even think about bringing i would bring 
uh, so my so my my replacements here. You want to bring a good game that people are going to love and want to play and actually get interested into board gaming. Code names, mm-hmm. exploding kittens, um, chameleon, nine million. <laughs> <laughs> All of these games kittens. are going to have people coming back, Exploding. changing their strategy. Insider, uh, yeah, I like. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of games that do it better. Yeah, uh, I would also bring up. You might completely disagree with this, but the game actually for me that killed Cards Against Humanity, I think it was by the same people. Maybe mm-hmm. not. It came around uh, close to the same time. I actually really enjoy Super Fight. Um, Never Super played Fight's it. fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually have. I yeah. played it once. It's, um, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a similar kind of, you know, it's a judge mechanic and blah, blah, but I do think it has a longer lifespan because of how you're building what you're talking about mm-hmm. and then how player-led well, it is. it's not just dirty joke, like right. not just yeah. out dirty joking right. each other. It's right, it's you having yeah. to put these together and come up with something clever and mm-hmm. explain it and argue it and stuff, mm-hmm. and I, I really like the idea of Super Fight, but... sure. Yeah, so I would say Cards Against Humanity is my number one uh, overhyped, that's fair. overrated. I don't think everybody's going to fight you on that. Honestly, yeah. I thought about it. I just thought the pick was a bit boring for me. I was like, it I don't was feel boring. like talking uh, about well, it. Well, we had different <laughs> philosophies here, right? right? Like, you guys were going off of, like, Board Game Geek hype. Yeah. There were some, like, I was thinking, like, populist well, who's playing sure. like, I, Who's playing a game in general, and is it overrated? 100%. I very easily could have put, and I'll just I'll give everybody a chance for like an honorable mention or two, and I'll just mm-hmm. throw mine out, like I'll, I'll get it going, is like One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Yeah. I despise that version of Werewolf. Werewolf is a game that I really do like, mm-hmm. uh, and there's ten versions that I prefer over One Night. Uh, but I kind of wanted to go after some bigger fish. <laughs> with, uh, I still with yeah. one these. night ultimate. Werewolf. I know you do. It's very well known. I know mm-hmm. you do. Uh, but anyways, so that that would, would be an also ran for me. Uh, anybody else honorable yeah. mentions also ran? Uh, no, uh, except for I thought of um, that. Clearly, um, the Great Wall should be an honorable mention for me. Once you guys said it, but other than that, I, d- I don't have any honorable mentions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Carcassonne would have was one of mine. I yep, yep. I yeah. Snuck it off the list. I wrote this one down, and since oh, Dan mentioned it earlier, I'm I'm just gonna. Uh, Robinson Crusoe. Oh, great I, I, um, I wrote that down because the rule book is awful. It's Learning better. from that, they've <laughs> adjusted the rule book, mm-hmm. and I don't know. It was just it, it was hard, and on top of that, you've got a ridiculously difficult rule book. It's it's a very fiddly game. You Ooh. have to okay, you have to shuffle this deck and take 10 cards and place mm-hmm. them here, but then that's separate from this deck that up. goes here. Honestly, once you have it organized in your box, it really doesn't. So if you have an insert for it, I bet that does amazing, but I'm just saying I have all my stuff ziplocked in in a certain way that I can set up that game in in 5 minutes. You know, like I mean, I it's but yes, it is a daunting game. Um and if it is if it is not taught properly, that sucks yeah, for sure because there's a lot number going on. Seventy six on Board Game Geek still after all these years, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I think it was one of the and first it, twenty like niche games that I learned. And I'm like, oh no! And no, it's I gonna get a know. bump. It's gonna get a bump when that Kickstarter fills. Yeah, yeah mine hasn't delivered yet. It's supposed to be this year sometime. So, so all right, guys. Woo, uh, that two is, hours. You know what? Splendor. I like Splendor. I like Splendor. <gasps> then I'm right. I enjoy Splendor <laughs> as well. Right. I played yeah, that game overrated. so much. <laughs> Uh, fun. So that is uh, that is us just going out on Woo! a limb and ha- hating on some very popular games. Yeah. Please, uh, nicely, uh, comment either on the uh, video itself or take the Discord and uh, let us know what some of your overhyped games are. Tell us why we are wrong and why Wingspan should be 24 or why Wingspan should be number one. Literally can't be wrong on this topic, and Please I love it. Please give me a valid one of the best games this is ever. for <laughs> Pandemic Legacy being one of the greatest gaming experiences of all time, not named Dan. Please. Oh. oh. Excited my side account Euchre. really quick. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, guys, I, that was a lot of fun. Yep. Yeah, it that was, was a good time. It, it was, I had almost as much fun making my list, gleefully writing down games that <laughs> I <laughs> dislike. Because, you know, uh, I like a lot of games. I, I Most of the we time know. I go into games wanting to like them. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. There's not a ton of games I hate. And I don't even hate every game on this list. Yeah. Sure. You know, maybe, maybe just That's a few. important to say because like, you have to be objective with something that's overrated or overhyped. Yes. You could well, still like an overhyped game. Also, right, uh, let's see. I own Terraforming Mars, Wingspan, I Blood Rage, mine. Fireball Island and Great Wall. So I own five out of my ten. I had Dice Throne, got rid of it. Had Villainous, got rid, of, got rid of it. Um, and then I have the app of Agricola, so that kind of counts. So really, 
I own almost every game on my list. Yeah. I still own six of these games, and two additional I sold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, full disclosure, right? Like, lots of content or context yeah. for everything. I threw out Small World. <laughs> in the garbage. <laughs> and I didn't even want to sell it. Spencer went over to your house. Madness. Ooh. Madness. Uh, all right, so guys. He'd be creepy. He would be it's like creeper gamer then if he's yeah. like creeping into my Do into my garbage. Creep? That would be his two Do things coming wow. together for for Small World. <laughs> That's it. That is it. All right, guys. Anything else before we say goodbye to these kind of folk? Because it's been over two hours. <sighs> like subscribe, I'm hungry. ring that bell. Me Thanks, too. Bob. Mike. Wow. You're in the Bob, seat for it. He's in the seat for wow. it. Wow. All right, guys. For the Board Game Rundown, I've been Tim. I've been Mike. I'm Andrew. Dan. And this was Top 10 Overrated slash Overhyped Games. <sighs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out the Board Game Rundown. If you like what you saw, like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Share our videos on social media and spread the word. We publish new content weekly, including reviews, unboxing, and Let's Plays. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>